And welcome back, folks. Thanks for joining to the RCI TV on both YouTube and Twitch. Now you're watching the infamous RCI World Tour, round two here at Paul Ricard, where even the seagulls are getting a bird's eye view of this GT3 showdown. While we're away, the pro drivers were fine tuning their strategies and the silver category was polishing their silverware aspirations. Trust me, you didn't miss a thing, except maybe a quick pit stop for a cross on. But let's dive straight back into the action where the only thing hotter than the Mediterranean sun in this competition on track. I'm Les Stevenson, your lead commentator with Ash Bibby behind the cameras. And joining me today, we have the great Jesse Lee. Jesse, how you doing? Hello, Les. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the broadcast. Final four hours as advertised. Still a very compelling race on hand for us today. You know, Les, your intro very nicely put and also interestingly encapsulates what's happened here today. We've got silver drivers well up inside, the, or silver teams, I should say, well up inside the top 10, two of them now. A couple of teams have fallen by the wayside since we last spoke, but uh, more than anything, still four grueling hours of racing left to go. Right as we went to break earlier on in the day, there were rain showers in the area that did bring rain to the racetrack for a little while, but as quickly as it showed up, it did move off. And Les, that's interesting because I was told by the weatherman that that was likely going to happen, that if we had rain, it was going to be very brief, and it was. They got one right. They certainly did, didn't they, Jesse? Finally, uh, you know, weather forecaster actually got it got it correct. But um, no, you're quite right. We did have a, uh, a very brief uh, episode of rain uh, where it did make that track extremely damp um, and uh, I believe it was even that very very light heavy medium rain or something along those oh, lines. Oh here we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can assure you that it was quite light rain but it was enough to soak the racetrack. Yeah you're not wrong but uh, yeah no we had uh, we did we did have about a half hour of rain um, where the track uh, interestingly actually quite quickly dried up um, where a lot of teams, there was quite a lot of strategy being played out, Jesse, where we had a lot of dry tyres and, and wet tyres being played out in, in certain phases of this, uh, of, of, of that part of the, the, uh, the race. But, um, but yeah, as you saw, there were quite a lot of, uh, of, of manoeuvres and strategies that took place. But, um, but yeah, as you've already alluded to, it was quite a, a nice part to, to bring into the, to the race to sort of spice a few few positions up and, um, and see how these teams were going to battle it out in regards to strategies and, and um, who could actually challenge uh, the, in, in the rain conditions. Yeah, and that also too kind of split up the strategy. A lot of teams and drivers were kind of hoping for that. They didn't really want a deluge. They didn't really want a lot of rain. It didn't really matter. All they wanted was something to break up the monotony to save them a set of dry weather tires later down the road. That's kind of what it did, even though it dried up quite quickly. We're still under that thread. It's a ever-present threat here at Circuit Paul Ricard. Today, we can have those rain showers at even the point of the wind, seven kilometers. That's quite significant. It is partly cloudy right now. The track temp when we left you was 37 degrees C. It's nowhere near that now as we head into the late afternoon and evening hours, 24 degrees, the track and ambient temperature match. So still the threat of weather. There's some ominous clouds off in the distance, but if you look at the weather widget in the top right-hand corner of the screen right now, it doesn't say it's going to rain uh, imminently, though it has just gone completely overcast. And typically that tells me that maybe rain is on the way. Yeah, I mean, you're quite right there, Jesse. I mean, especially with the winds uh, picking up now with a seven kilometre hour wind, it normally indicates that we, we may have inclement weather on its way, uh, which, you know, will only spice up the action. Uh, we've had we've had some great action already. Uh, we've had some uh, trials and tribulations, I think is probably the best way to put it for some teams. Uh, quite some outstanding driving as well from you know, one I can think of straight away that, uh, you know, we've got the 797 and. Uh, Jordan Daly and, uh, and, and Mr. O'Grady, or sorry, Mr. Grady, should I say, uh, you know, where they've even had uh, technical issues, where they've had to to get in the pit lane and, and, and restart everything and, uh, and, you know, and go all the way to the back of the grid and even go a lap down. Um, but uh, 
And as you can see, if you look closely on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see they're already up to peace heaven. So that's a mighty, mighty effort. They've they've really, really, uh, really sort of pulled out the bag there to, to gain there. Now, I would not be surprised, Jesse Lee, if we see those guys on the podium come towards the end of the race. Yeah, of course, this car was leading very early on. Jordan Daly qualified, but P6, not even in the top five. But if you know Jordan, that doesn't really matter to them. And they drove to the front within that first hour. And of course, it all came crashing down. They had some sort of a connection issue. The stewards deemed it a hazard. I believe an incident even occurred. They were told to swap drivers, fix it, or uh, probably face retirement. Well, they haven't. They haven't. They persevered through that. Daly, I believe, has taken the bulk of the driving. I don't know if they've actually fixed their issue, but Daly doesn't have whatever issue uh, that was plaguing them earlier, and he has taken the lion's share of the driving. He told me this morning, hey, I want to do some driving. I want to do some racing. I feel good about it. So added to that, uh, it's no surprise. They were 26th a lap down earlier on in the day and back inside the top seven. Christoph Estrepa still leads the race. That was exactly the way it was when we last left you. The only difference is the gap is monumental now. It's the 769's race to lose. That Bentley for RCI Esports is absolutely flying. The next nearest competitor to them isn't De Jong in second place. That's a silver car, of course. Their next nearest competitor is the nearly on pace 899 Porsche in third with Mikhail Sundstrom. Now, that's likely to change as it normally will because uh, you get different drivers and different strengths in the silver class. As a pro team, you're pretty much all on level pegging and also to the ever present pit strategy and whether if it were. But um, here's Carter Strepin, not really a uh, worry to them. If I was the young, the only worry to me would be that number two in fourth place. As remember, they had to, they've got like a lap or so lead, as I recall. It does the young the Dutch sim racing team? But even still, uh, you're never really happy, are you, Les? Like if you're five seconds in the lead, you want to be ten seconds in front of the next car. If you're a lap in front, you want to be two laps in front. Racing drivers hard to please. They certainly are. Um, you know, as you already alluded to, they're always wanting to do that little bit extra to make sure they can really get it, you know, every ounce out of that, that car and, um, and really pull the biggest gap they can possibly do. But um, they're never just content with, uh, you know, just being in P2 or in the lead of their class. They'll, they'll be pushing hard all the way to the end because they want to make sure that, the, you know, they, it's like you already alluded to, they, they've, you know, it's in their hands really. Uh, you know, they, it's like the 769, you know, unless, unless they're going to be uh, making their own mistakes and really, you know, let's be honest, unless something really bad goes wrong, then, um, you know, it's it's been a, it's been a commanding lead and, and you know, deserve victory. But um, let, let's not put the commentator's curse on just yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been one of those races. Um, I've been part of it as well. So, uh, you know, I've, I've done my bit for my team. And I know how hard it has been out there on track. Uh, we've unfortunately seen some some goers, uh, but uh, but yeah, we've had we've had a lot of um, we've had a lot of interesting moves, but you know none none of which have been over the top, but just just a little bit on the tight side. And with that rain coming in, it really has uh, spiced things up. But, um, but yeah, no, it's been really good so far, hasn't it, Jesse? Yeah, it certainly has. You could say that again, and uh, of course the ever-present weather. Looks like we may have a system blowing back in. The sun completely gone, and that will sort of worry the drivers. They were probably rooting for it earlier a little bit now. Maybe not the case because they've already saved a tire set or two, and uh, this would throw a wrench into their strategy, and everyone now kind of content if you're in the top 10, all told. You just want to get to the end. A couple of teams, though, looking for that extra little spice. They want a little something to happen in the race here today. Well, not just split one in uh, today's events, two different splits racing. Uh, of course, here on the RCI platform, we're watching, of course, split one, but there's a whole other race going on out there. Les Stevenson, we're joined by one of those drivers from split two in Peter Varga.
Hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, Peter Vargo. How how how's Split Two going on? How's it going for you guys in the Team Monkey Racing Ferrari? Uh, me very good. My teammate very shit. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, any, any more uh, sort of information on there in regards to how how bad it's gone for them? Uh, the first thing started quite alright for them, but then uh, is, it, is the curse or the dangers of using custom delivery some people have left and rejoined, which caused the light spikes for my teammate, causing him to slightly veer off into the sunset, or like, or uh, the sun over the quarry card, so that lost us time. And later on, just a couple of mistakes and uh, not very patient drivers when running around slower cars, shall we say. Well, as you know, Peter, it's a long race. So, you know, when you say about concentration uh, or losing the, the concentration during the race, you know, it's not really a surprise to hear that. Um, you know, I'm experienced myself within the endurance scene and it's it's not hard to lose concentration in such a long race. but. Um, but, uh, you know, have you guys, uh, what's your sort of practice regime? Do you do a lot of practice before, you know, as teammates and get a setup ready? Uh, we just set up. Funnily enough, I just found a random YouTube setup which actually was perfect for what we wanted. As we were aiming for a little bit more understeery setup that was not good and true through the tyres, considering how heavy quarry car it is on them with the double stints. So we found that and then we did a little bit of practice week before together and after that was just everyone to their own. This was kind of, it gets hard when you work and having to put some practice together so everyone was just, well two of us were just doing stuff by ourselves and we ended up here. Yeah and it, you know it's it's all about teamwork as, as everyone knows and you know if we if you can get together and, and and get a setup going that works for both of you then uh, you're halfway there aren't you but uh, it's interesting you should mention obviously about the double stints um i forgot to mention that of course during this race there is a limited tire set of uh, 12 tires for, for the entire uh, sorry eight tires eight. for the 12 12 hour race thank you for correcting me <laughs> and uh yeah so how have you guys found it uh, in the double stints uh, so the plan was that my teammate was going to do all of the double stints because he thought uh, it was the better option to give me uh, the fresh tires as the faster driver, but uh, how it turned out, it was actually better for me to do the double stints as I was more consistent somehow, which is not usually what I aim with the uh, tires. As by his words, I chew through them like hell, uh, but not today, so I did a... Uh, the two double stints he did one and from now on it's just blast to the, towards the end yeah i think a lot of uh, a lot of teams were quite concerned about the tire wear at this track uh fast very fast track you know with some very fast corners and quite an abrasive track as well i think a lot of people were quite concerned about the tire wear uh, but i think uh with that that rain shower that we uh, you know that was happened in in this uh in the top split here, um, it's definitely helped out with the with the tire wear. How, how's the weather been in split two? Hot and sunny throughout the most of the race. We are under cloud now. The which is around 24, so maybe something might arrive there. The wind, the wind is quite strong, but I'm hoping just for a dry finish. As yeah. we are looking for a E2 in the AM class, I. Very certain we can do that. E1 is a little bit of a stretch, but needs a little bit of a help and a good luck. Well, that's, that's, it's, it's great to hear that you, you're doing so well and, and you're having, a, you know, what you know, you've had your issues, but you know, you've had you had a good race so far. Um, as you've heard, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it just goes to prove, unfortunately, as much as we try and uh, set these these races up uh, the same with two splits, it can quite often be very very different weather. But um, I'm going to pass you over to Jesse now, and see, let's see if uh, Jesse's got any questions for you. Yeah, of course. Hi, Jesse. Uh, hey, what's going on, Peter? I got to ask uh, Team Monkey Racing synonymous here with uh, racing at RCI. Do it weekly. Uh, th this series, it, it's a big one, but uh, more importantly than that, how's the Ferrari handle in comparison to some of the other cars? Do you have advantages that other cars don't have? 
I don't know. I was actually expecting to be down on uh, straight line speed, but it does not appear to be that. So that, that was quite a good surprise to me, and overall the Ferrari is just uh, a car that is not great at anything, but very good at everything. So you can set it up the way you want, like, if you want it to be a little bit oversteer or a little bit faster in a straight line, you can set it up that way, but it is not a car like some others that have inherently good trade of some kind. But it is... It is a Ferrari. I'm happy. There you go. Hey, sometimes love's just a Ferrari. I'll ask you another one. Who's leading in split two currently? Uh, currently, it's the 686 BMW of uh, Erneke with Nielsen in a 437 Mercedes behind and Roberts in a 202 Nissan in P3. Uh, for the AM class, it's Telekens in 294 Ferrari, Merchant in a 145 BMW, and then it's me in a 508 Ferrari. Let's go. So Team Monkey on the, the podium right now. I mean, are, are you getting back in the car or are you done for the day? Oh, no, no, no I'm, I'm getting back for the final two hours, definitely. There you go. Uh, it is, it we is need some, media... uh, we need some speed towards the end. Well, well, I was going to ask, is second place maybe the win? Is that on the cards? Second place is definitely on the cards. When I handed the car to Red, we were about eight seconds behind P2. And if we keep it off the track limits, then we might we definitely have a chance. P1, as I said, we need a little bit of help from something. I have to say, my first stint, boy was it nice. Yeah, what was, so, what was so nice about it? Were you just flying through the field, or did the car feel really good in that particular the, time? The, the car just felt nice. I mean, the pace, I was past the of silver guys. Actually, with everything how it went, I lost a couple positions on the start, avoiding uh, troubles of other people. And then just slowly made it through some of the other arm class cars, picking off some nice fights. And... Went into the pit lane in P4 and uh, gave my teammate car in P2. And we got the drive through. Oh, yes. Oh, and, uh, I was already at peace with uh, this one, so that was uh, already in my calculations. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard about that. Some teams do calculate that. Uh, Peter, I'm gonna ask you anybody you wanna shout out, say hello to, maybe the teammates, maybe the partner? Uh, the part, yeah, the main Team Monkey Racing part, and that is nobody. If somebody wants to sponsor us, send me a message on Discord. I'm always up for uh, good cooperation. Uh, but uh, to everyone, then just the other car in uh, Split One. Hopefully, they are gonna bring it home in the uh, top 10. It would be a good finish for them. Yeah, that's great, Pete, and thank you very much for joining us here in the in the booth. And it's great to hear that you're doing so well. I just want to, you know, wish you on behalf of the, the commentary team that the uh, we hope you, you can finish as high up as possible. And maybe P2 is on the cards. One last request I would say is uh, it would be great to hear from your teammate um, when he's out of the car uh, to, to, to get their point of view on uh, on on their race as well. But uh, thanks thanks so much for joining us. It's uh, great that you've uh, you've come along today and told us what's going on in split two and like i said we wish you all the best in your race yeah cheers i'll tell him uh, to see if he can come here and also one note guys get some comic books or something into the green waiting room it, it kind of gets boring <laughs> in there when you wait for too long <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 great that's brilliant yeah thank you very much peter and uh, like i said uh yeah good luck in the race and um yeah it'd be great to hear back from you uh maybe at the end yeah see ya guys thank you so, Jesse. Uh, yeah, that, that's very uh, funny. Uh, for, for those that don't know what Varga was on about right there from Team Monkey Racing, we have a, a sort of a green room, if you will, where drivers, teams, etc., can come into and uh, they can sort of queue for uh, interviews, etc., and so forth. He was, he was commentating, he was, make, he was making a comment that uh, our, uh, our team, uh, 
our tea and biscuit facilities are not up to scratch. We're gonna have to deal with that, I think. Well, I've been I've been asking for ages, Jesse, for custard creams. Uh, no one seems to deliver, uh, and I think the comic book edition would be would be a great idea. So yeah, thank you for your advice. I do for like that. that. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a great idea. Well, uh, you know. Ash behind the cameras, everyone. Ash Bibby behind the cameras today. Um, he's he's asking for bourbons as well, Jesse. So I think we need to have a bit of a shake up for that green room. And uh, now that's great. It's, uh, it's great to have along, wouldn't it, Jesse? Yeah, it absolutely would. I'm going to start a fight right before I leave you. I'll be back for the end of the race. But before I go, I've just got to ask when you have your tea, do you dump the biscuit? Yes or no? Hell yes, I do. I am known as the Dunker. There are amongst, well, amongst many other things, but you know. That, you're, you're many things to many people. You're a, you're a man of many skills. But uh, yeah, I I will admit, I uh, I used to be a Dunker. i tell you why. I like Stroop waffles, and I do like to put a nice Stroop waffle over top of the cup, warm it up a little bit. I don't put it in the microwave or the microwave. As somebody once said um, <laughs> quite famously indeed but uh, i do like to do that a bit as well if the uh, biscuit or cookie as we'd call it in my country is a little bit too big but uh, we seem to be in general agreement there no argument at all les though i'll see you in just a little while your partner has arrived right behind me he wants the seat thank you very much jesse lee and uh, go off and get some well-deserved rest as we are now joined by Dan von Zupen. Absolutely spot on there, Les. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, taking over Jesse's position for uh, the last uh, two to three ish hours here on uh, the second round of the World Tour uh, season. Currently, glad to be here. A lot has happened, but a lot is still to come. It certainly is, Dan. And thank you very much for joining us. And we, I've just looked across and we've got quite a bit going on in the YouTube chat. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to quickly go to there. Uh, we've got we've got guys, uh, you know, putting out some support for their teams and their teammates. And uh, it's great to see some messaging there. I will say, um, Callum, ball, you know, bourbons are good, but custard creams are definitely the best. They are definitely not awful. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we've got some great chat going on. Uh, apparently, uh, Ash, we did miss, we did miss a, uh, a move by Manzo uh, to get into uh, P12. But uh, I'm sure um, we, we missed a great move, but unfortunately we couldn't quite catch that. There was so much else going on. I'm sure we'll catch some more moves in the in the, uh, in the future. But yeah, Dan, I don't know if you've been able to catch up much of what's gone on, um, but uh, we've had it's, it's been quite a lot going on. We've had we've had some we've had some wet weather. Um, we've had a lot of uh, guys, you know, going out and, and really putting the hammer down and trying to get those fast stints in. Other teams have elected to, to do the double stinting first uh, and then maybe get some single stinting in later on. And then, of course, the wet weather came in and totally threw all that out of the window uh, for a good half an hour or so. So, uh, you know, I know you I know you like the rain, especially in the iRacing scene. Uh, so what about in ACC? In ACC, better iRacing, uh, there's, I call it a static wet line. Uh, the wet line is wet but it's the dry racing line most of the time uh, it's good it's definitely um, well I think pre i racing wet weather it's definitely was one of the best in wet weather handling in my opinion um, but of course our racing has stepped up the ladder but uh, in ACC I've, uh, I've liked it quite too uh, I've always been more of a faster driver in the wet than in the dry um, so i like the wet weather in uh, in acc maybe more is still to come of course three hours ago we're in france so everything can be unexpected over there um so i'm excited to see some more rain but i'll definitely do like it in acc less yeah I, I must say i'm a fan of it too um it's it's more manageable, I think, is probably the best way to put it. Um, I have found yes. the eye racing, uh, yeah, the update with with the wet weather, which we've all been waiting for. Um, you know, has has finally arrived, but it is extremely difficult to manage, and um, it's it's kind of uh, it's almost too realistic, if that makes sense. But um, <laughs> but anyway, um, as you can see, we're now on board with the RCI Sport 769 at the Bentley, uh, just about to complete. Well, it looks like two uh, lap 264 with 3 hours and 24 
minutes to go, uh, they have a commanding lead over uh, P2 overall, which of course is our leader in the silver class of De Jong, currently in the Aston Martin there at the 475, <coughs> excuse me, and, uh, and, and Mikel Sundström uh, on the bottom step of that podium, uh, currently in P3 overall. But um, Dan, how much uh, experience have you got at this, this, uh, this, this extremely long and fast circling track in the south of France? Actually, my first ever race on ACC in uh, the computer scene, in the PC scene, was a qualifier for the FIA Motorsport Games. Back then I got lapped by Chris Hartevelt. This was over two and a half years ago. Since then, uh, I've enjoyed the track more and more. Uh, I like it in the wet. Uh, I'm also faster in the wet there since uh, my last race. And uh, if I ever come into this situation again, I'll battle some guys like Chris Hartevelt. I hope to not get lapped again, possibly even compete, but that's a huge task, but who knows. Uh, Paul Ricard, challenging. It has things of both sides. It has slow corners fast straight long straight uh, it is fast corners as well it's very technical so it's demanding on a driver as well it certainly is and um it, you know it's, it is one of those tracks like you said with those slow corners and the fast corners uh, a little bit of a break down the mystery straight of course um where uh, a lot of drivers elect to go for the the really extremely low in some circumstances no wing at all on that rear of that car yes. to really get the, the fastest speed possible down there you know with the, the potential overtakes that could happen uh, of course you compromise uh, speed through the corners but yeah it's one of those tracks it's not one of my personal favorites um but it is it is a challenging track nonetheless and um we uh we, we're seeing what i can only describe as a, a great spectacle here uh, once again you know it does seem to bring great racing i must say we have a little bit of a low during the middle of this race because it's such a long race as you know 12 hours but we have that added spice with not only the weather but also the, the limited tire sets of eight, eight tire sets yes indeed uh, last time it was limited as well i think it was six or five tire sets on the nurburgring that would already be a challenge and with of course eight tire sets it's already a challenge on itself uh, and it, it depends, it's gonna depend on when you want to make your pit stop and how long you're gonna extend those pit stops to make the full advantage of uh, your tyre. I can imagine there is some tyre saving going on right now uh, for some drivers. Of course, we know some cars fare well better on tyre wear than others. I, uh, if I recall, Ferrari is a bit less and a Porsche is a bit less in uh, the tire saving department and some other cars do benefit of it so it's really a chess game of how you uh, are going to attack your stint uh, are you going to be offensive defensive are you going to save your tires are you going to save your fuel for the long run so those are all really interesting tactics uh, you can come up with uh, especially in such a long race so it's going to be interesting to see, especially in the end, um, which teams are going to take an advantage on your tyres or not. Yeah, it's uh, it's all about uh, it's all about strategy at the moment. We're at that part of the race, aren't we? In this 12-hour slog, uh, you know, around this this you know extremely fast but also um, challenging track, like you've already mentioned. Um, but yeah, we're we're at that point where it's uh, you know. People are sort of figuring out the entire strategies where, where we're at uh, and see where they're going to end up. But uh, it's looking like it's going to be uh, you know, a great finish. Um, it does look like the uh, the weather's calmed down a little bit now. We have a bit of sunshine. I'm not saying there's not going to be uh, you know, no rain, but uh, you know, and we do have uh, a, a poll going on now, a vote uh, system going on in the RCI TV YouTube chat. Uh, where you can now vote to, to tell us what you think, whether there's going to be rain or not again within this race. Um, but let's not forget as well, we do stream on Twitch as well, and we have quite a few followers that have, uh, that have joined us today. You know, just a few to mention. We've got the real Sparty, uh, Magoogle official, and Oxygen Six Two Ten. Uh, ZU1 Love has also followed us today. So it's great to see the support. You know, there's quite a few actually uh, done uh, you know, done today, but. Um, but yeah, I just wondered, um, you know, with you coming in at this stage of the race, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to chat you before the race, but how much have you seen of the race before, before now? I've 
come in uh, in probably I've probably watched it five times in the span of five minutes. So I know there's some rain. I know there was some chaos uh, when the rain came and when the rain faded away. Um, but much of that is just endurance racing, and sometimes uh, I think I've just just come in when everyone was just playing their strategy and letting everything uh, around them uh, unfold. Um, and so some serious accidents or some big overtakes I can't recall. Uh, but I can, I can imagine um, some big shuffles have, um, because of the rain, uh, been happening down and up at, in the field. Yeah, it's, um, the, the rain definitely uh, did add uh, a lot of uh, uh, action, should we say, to, to that part of the race. As we now see Matt Stevens of RPMS Simsport, the 707 Porsche there, getting around uh, the number 46 Ferrari, the drop in the hammer racing. Uh, with Brim Lilith currently uh, piloting that, that machine around the track. But um, it is for overall position, but not for class. So I think that was probably uh, Brim there just deciding just to let Matt get through um, along that Mistral straight and uh, just to concede the position, knowing that, you know, the bigger picture, uh, well, currently in P4 in class, but um, but yeah, I'm just looking over the YouTube chat done and uh, there's quite a lot going on and we have quite a lot of support going on for the teams like we've already mentioned. Uh, quite a lot of support actually for the Dutch sim racing team. So uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people there asking, uh, give a shout out for them. Um, and uh, Malk's asking if it's been wet. Uh, well, we've talked quite a lot about the rains, Mal. So uh, you, can, you can take as you wish from that. But yes, it has uh, it has added a bit of spice that we've already mentioned. But um, yeah, it's quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of chat going on there. But uh, excuse me. But you know, we're at that stage of the race, like I've already mentioned, where strategy is playing a big part. I mean, when, when you're in an endurance event uh, yourself, do you know? Is it something that you really sort of uh, pride yourself on? And, you know, are you just an out-and-out, fast-paced guy, or is it a case of you look like to look after the tyres? Uh, normally, when I'm in the car, if it's ACC or not, or something like I racing and it's an endurance race, I want to keep my head cool. I want to um, do my job, get out, and nothing more, nothing less really. Of course, more would always be appreciated, but it's so difficult. I just want to get the car uh, home in one piece if I know I'm fast and I'm confident around a track I know all right I can attack a bit more at this stage or and I should be a little bit more careful at this stage so really when I'm in like a Daytona 24 when there's lots of happening you have to lap a lot of traffic etc I just want to keep my nose clean because uh, I'd rather have me losing 10 seconds by purely being careful than losing a minute of repairs by being a little bit too aggressive, crashing the car or colliding with somebody and uh, losing a, po a possible good result from the team. So I just like to keep it clean, keep it consistent and uh, do my job and get out. Yeah, it's, it's you know you, when you're part of a team, you don't you don't want to let your team down by making some silly mistakes. I totally get what you're you're trying to say there, and especially you know it, it can be quite nerve wracking for people as well. You know, especially the lesser experienced guys of the team. You know, they're new coming into the team. You, you know, might not fully sort of get how they actually operate. But um, and there'll be some people today racing within this event. You know, that have, have uh, potentially not raced with these teams or simply never done an endurance event. So we welcome them in and um, we, we, uh, we embrace them and we, we hope that they're having a good time. Um, I know from my own experience, my, I can remember my first ever endurance event. It was the most nerve wracking thing I've done for a very, very long time. And all I could think about was just not letting my team down. Um, but, you know, like you've already sort of been talking about in regards to the tyres and how you think about it, and how you think about, you know, how you're going to drive that car to its, hopefully to its full extent, or more so for your, your full extent, uh, without uh, damaging the prospects of the team's overall position. But um, I, I'm personally one of these people that jumps in the car and I pride myself in, in consistency. I'm not the fastest one of the team. I'm the first one to hold my hand up in that. And um, as many of you may already know, I am part of the, the Drop of the Hammer uh, racing team in, in the number 46. And uh, I'm just noticing for myself, it looks like we're in, currently in P3 in, 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 you know, in, our, in, our, um, uh, in our class, in silver class, uh, with Grimlin uh, currently behind the wheel. But, um, but yeah, no, I just pride myself in, in making sure that I don't want to let the team down by doing something silly. So. 
my my own thing is all about consistency done yeah and it's it's that nerve-wracking thing when you start again in endurance race or you're starting your thing that can really uh mess everything uh, up because for personal experience more time than not i have uh i am drive better when i'm relaxed when i let everything come to me see how i handle it don't put any pressure on myself and of course it comes with confidence it comes with experience being uh you allowing yourself to take that calmness um I into the race and so you can think i won't make any mistakes uh, i'm not trying to push anything i just let the race come towards me and whatever happens i'll handle it the best i can because that's all you can do in an endurance race and that comes down to experience once again um if you've done your first endurance race you're gonna handle a situation differently than uh when you have done 20 endurance races that's simply how it is um so for me i really let the race come towards me um if i'm feeling confident and that's really almost the almost um when things pan out for you yeah it's um it's so interesting for myself you know how when i speak to other drivers and other teams you know how they've uh, how they fared within the race and also you know what they found was the most you know particularly most difficult part of it and you know like you said you know some people are quite impatient they like to be just look at the out and out speed uh, of their stint and some people, like myself and yourself, by the sounds of it, you know, like to take it steady, you know, sort of really evolve with the car and the track and feel like, you, you know, you just keep lap by lap learning more as you go. You can do as much practice as you want, of course, um, but when you're in a real uh, sort of race situation, um, it, things can definitely change. But um, we're going to go back to the track action now, as we look now, as we've got three hours and 12 minutes left of this, this great race. Uh, we'll certainly look at the, uh, the 797, the RCI Esports, uh, with Martin Grady currently behind the wheel of that Bentley. Um, we have found with the, uh, of course, we do run, uh, we've got a customised bot uh, for this, or BOP for people that don't know, there's balance of performance, where each car will uh, be given you know, ballast or you know, uh, engine tweaks, whichever it may be, to bring all the cars that little bit closer together to make the racing a little bit tighter and, and, and more exciting but um the, the bentley definitely seems to be suiting this track certainly in the right hands of these guys the rci's the esports teams and uh and we've got of course the leaders the 769 also in the bentley so just goes to prove it seems to be very strong here at the moment uh, even with these long, limited tire sets um we've also found out i don't know if you you know Dan, but um unfortunately the 797 did have quite a lot of troubles at the uh sort of beginning yes. of the race um you know where they uh, unfortunately had a, a few technical issues where they had to sort of almost reset start again and, and also go a lap down so to see them now back up in p7 uh you know quite getting on with it really and, and proving that you can have your, your your bad luck you can still get on with it and you keep trying and you eventually will get there such a long race and it's, it's just great to see isn't it that they're, they're up to p7 already yeah, indeed. Uh, I think an hour ago I checked uh, how they were doing in the race and they were P10 or something like it and they're now P7, which means of course they're on the way up. And I always, um, these, you know, technical issues, let's call it, in sim racing, I, w I always compare it to mechanical uh, uh, situations uh, and problems in real life as Anthony Kostinger is I think lapping Grim Lilith or overtaking Grim Lilith I'm sorry and so he goes up to P13 indeed Grim Lilith uh, that's bad news for you Lee, Les but um, the number 46 Ferrari has lost the podium spot in this uh, race of course still three hours and ten minutes to go like Les said uh, everything can still happen but Grim Lilith seems to be fading away a bit the pace isn't quite there as it seems because Anthony Kostinger can really run away quite quickly again so maybe Lilith has a little bit of a problem there goes into pit lane for another stop so it could be a problem it could also just be your tire wear like we discussed earlier so Grim Lilith lo losing a position and coming in trade away uh, interesting to see so there are still um, position changes all over at the field currently going um, and so that's really interesting to see but 
Back to the point about Moth and Grady, I always compare those mechanical and technical issues in sim racing uh, to mechanical issues in the real racing because, well, in ACC it can happen that you can blow your engine. We haven't seen it quite a lot in the GT3s. It can happen with, of course, the Audi R8 in a GT4. Quite sensitive, the Audi R8. If you downshift it too quickly, your engine will blow up. Um, so there are mechanical issues in sim racing, however they don't often occur really. So I always compare these two. Um, you might not get mechanical issues, but you can get technical issues. And well, it's not really the beauty of sim racing, but it can happen in sim racing, Lee. It certainly can, and um, unfortunately it does happen, uh, like you said. But I mean, it is interesting that you compare it to mechanical uh, issues in, you know in the uh, in the real life uh, racing of course but and it is I suppose when you when you look at it like that it's a great way of putting it you know at the end of the day you put just as much effort into a race and to have a technical issue within sim racing is not too dissimilar to having a, a mechanical issue out on track in, in real life so you know it's it's something that you know you have to take on the chin as a team um, it's no one's fault it's just one of those things you know, it's a bit. It's no. It's not exactly like they put it into the wall, and you know, for some silly overtake maneuver. So you know, to have those issues is a real shame to see. But you know, everyone, you know, whether you like it or not, everyone eventually will one day have a technical issue of some sort, which will put them out of sync, or even worst case scenario, put them out of the race completely and have to retire early. But um, but yeah, no, we uh, we're now on board now. Is uh, we see the three one six BMW, the Stone Cold Racing uh, PR race team there. Uh, you know, I go around that fast corner. You know, that's one of the places I do find is extremely hard to keep the car under control. And you know, where you really sort of you, you're sort of fighting with the front, then the rear, and before you know, it, you're back on the traction, then you're fighting with the rear again. And you know, that's that's something I, I personally enjoy. This that part of the track is so technical. Um, it's uh, that's the bit I really enjoy. Yeah, and it's again uh, a technical circuit, as we said uh, a few minutes earlier. And that's the beauty of um, endurance racing, and it's the beauty of this track. Everything really puts you to the test, especially on a circuit like Paul Ricard. You do have a really long straight to think again about possibly your next move, uh, but you could also say that a uh, really long back straight is almost too long for your mind to maybe uh, get insecure about uh, your uh, next turn that's a really fast right turn uh, five turns to the left nine turns to the right this circuit has so quite a lot of turns 14 turns and uh, again like we said before pretty technical and so Dan, uh, Dan sorry I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to interrupt you there I've just seen uh, I don't know if you can see on the standings on the left hand side we've got quite a development yes. there in P2, Ooh. which is P1 in class, the 475 of the D DSRT RJB Solutions uh, Aston Martin. They've unfortunately gone and got themselves a drive through. Now, I'm assuming that will be for track limits. Uh, I've just had that confirmed in my ear as well. It is for mm. track limits, and it's one of those. Well, as we see, they go off again. Wow. I mean, you, I mean, once you've got your drive through, you might as well take a bit more. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, unfortunately for them, they really have. Uh, exceeded the track it was just that one too many times and of course people that don't know you get your three warnings and then that fourth time you you go off track and uh, you've gained an advantage or deemed that you've gained an advantage then you will be given a drive through by by the acc game itself so unfortunate you know unfortunate circumstances there of now giving them a drive through and we were talking earlier i was talking with jesse about uh, you know team drivers that are never happy just to be content with you know p1 for example in class they want to push and push and push, and it looks like they may have pushed a bit too hard there, though. Yeah, indeed, the Paul Ricard is such a sensitive uh, circuit for track limits, too. So, um, I, I probably myself couldn't avoid a track limit around here in maybe an hour, but it's something almost inevitable uh, for some cars, for some teams. Like you say, Jesse, some teams just want to push a little bit too hard for that next position and as a result drop even further back because of uh, track limits or another mistake uh, but that's endurance racing you know it happens it happens to a lot of people and I'm sure they're not gonna be the last one because we have three hours remaining we have uh, well a lot of hours um, uh, we had already so 
I can I can really imagine some cars already driving with two track limits almost on the edge for a drive through. So I think they're not the last one less. No, and um, we are going to see plenty more. I would have thought as the uh, as the uh, the minutes drop down, as you said, uh, towards the end, there could even be a few slip ups where drivers are starting to get that little bit tired and lack of concentration starts to kick in, and you just have that little mistake, go a little bit wider before you know it, you just exceeded track limits, and the uh, you know, like you said, I know, I know the drop of the hammer racing uh, have been on three track limits for, uh, since uh, the, the end of stint one. Uh, where unfortunately Grim, Grim managed to, uh, Grim Lilith of course, uh, those who don't know is one of our drivers, um, managed to, to get three track limits within the first hour. So not, not a great start to a 12 hour event, but I'll let him off for uh, the amount of positions that he made up at the start. But, um, but you can see now Tom Watts is now in the car after that stop where uh, Grim would have done a double stint. But, um, but yeah, I did, uh, I did mention about the, uh, the custom BOP that's uh, been held for the uh, RCI uh, World Tour. Um, I must say as well, it is an NFM uh, mm. uh, BOP. It's not one of our own, so I just want to make sure I put that out there uh, just before people start correcting me. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great. I think it's a great addition, really, to, to this type of endurance racing where you can bring those cars that little bit closer just by making a few little tweaks, currently supplied by uh, LFM, to, to allow the, the racing to be that bit closer. Yeah, and the BOP does really work because except for two brands of cars, uh, we have only the Bentley and the Aston Martin car double in the top 10. The rest is all different manufacturers and uh, you can go like that down in the field as well. So really a lot of different cars. I didn't expect to, the Aston Martin to be up there, uh, but it is P2 and P5. Uh, Kleinen and Hudemakers currently driving those Aston Martins. So. LFM doing a great job with that BOP system and I'm thrilled to see so many cars taking it up to each other. Yeah, and uh, as we see here, uh, coming down the Mistral Strait, we see the 769 really, really gaining the slipstream there on the, on the McLaren and the, they go ultra wide. Whether that was just a miss, miss the Bentley or not, I don't know, but uh, they, they did it and they're going extremely wide there. And I hope they didn't get a track limit warning for that, because that'll be another one to the tally. But um, no, it has been a it has been a great addition with BOP. Um, like you said, with the exception of a couple of cars, which you know you can't get it 100% right all the time. Um, but you know, it's it's certainly looking like it at the moment. It's certainly in the favour of the Bentley. But of course, it takes a lot more than just BOP to be fast consistently for what has been so far nine hours of racing. So um, you know, we've got to give credit to the teams as well. That have uh, put these, uh, you know, these laps together to, to get this far out in the lead. I mean, they are just over two laps ahead uh, of their, their closest rivals, and um, uh, which is uh, the, the McLaren, actually driven by one of our very own uh, you know, Benjamin Harmon uh, in the nine in the seven nine six. And uh, yeah, it's it's you know, at the end of the day, you've got to you've got to put credit where it's due. And uh, they, you know they put the laps together, and I'm sure had the technical issues not been there with the 797, they would have been right up there, probably bumper to bumper, uh, even now. Yeah, it's it's the story of what could have been, what maybe should have been, uh, but those stories you get, of course, all the time here in engines racing. It's one of uh, one of the interesting things really uh, as i can see at the top right corner the track is cooling down a little bit which is good for the cars because less temperature on the track uh, means more grip and less temperature for or le less degrees uh, on the outside temperature it's it's also better for the engine uh, correct me if i'm wrong but that's a good thing because now we don't have to really worry that much about uh, you still have to worry but you can manage your tires a little bit easier of course in that case everyone is in the same boat because everyone for everyone uh, the track has gone down one degree uh, and it might go down one degree as well a uh, track is currently optimum we can also see no rain for 30 minutes so don't get your hopes on the rain uh, too high today because with three hours to go everything can happen but it looks quite unlikely here at Paul Ricard so um, yes yeah, we can see the number 21 and they have quite a big field less uh, today 
Yeah, it certainly has. And, um, you know, with you saying there about the rain, it's interesting, actually, we had a we had a poll uh, in the YouTube chat um, that has concluded. We had uh, we had it very close, actually. A lot of people, uh, well, sorry, a lot of people voted and uh, it looks like it's almost a 50-50 split there. It's just gone towards the no, uh, but they, you know, people thinking it's not going to rain uh, for the rest of the session. Uh, with three hours to go, I think that's a little bit bit judgmental um we, you know we've got an eight kilometer wind anything can happen yet we only know what's going to happen in the next 30 minutes so far let's see what happens but um we're gonna we're gonna take a, a short break uh done we're gonna go and off have, have a cup of tea uh yes. and ash is gonna put us on board i believe uh with with uh, mr roscam uh in the uh the number 30 at mercedes so let's 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 let ash put us on board with him as we go and have a cup of tea and uh, we'll be we'll be right back in a bit, in a bit.
And welcome back, folks. Uh, back to round two of the RCI World Tour here at Paul the Card. We have now been refreshed with our cups of tea and a croissant, maybe one or two croissants. I don't know about you, Dan. I, I love mine with the old jam. Oh, I love a bit of jam on my croissant. Anyway, back to the racing. Uh, we're back here, like I said, at Paul Ricard, and we've had uh, we haven't had any rain yet. Um, well, any more rain, should I say? Um, and it doesn't look to be any more predicted just yet, Dan. But um, it's looking like uh, the wind's picked up a bit more. Um, we've had uh, whilst we've been away on break, uh, we've had a couple of overtakes happen, uh, mainly uh, lapping, I must admit. But um, we've had some bump drafting down the back straight uh, on that Mistral straight as well. But, uh, but yeah, it's certainly tying up to uh, you know these last two and a half hours to be uh, quite a, quite a good finish. Yeah, we had some uh, wide moments in uh, Coupe de Singes as well. I probably pronounce it horribly, but uh, some sketchy moments uh, throughout the race here as well. Uh, we also currently, if he's ready, have a man to interview. Ted Edwards currently driving the 244 Lexus in split two. Ted, how is it going over there? Uh, could be better, but it's, it's okay. Currently, what position are you in, Ted? P5, I think we should be net P6. But we, uh, we did start P15. Alright, and, uh, well, almost more than eight hours has passed. What has really happened for you guys that's big in this race? Uh, we got a drive through and we've got 38 seconds of damage. That's quite a lot, 38 seconds of damage. How, how has that happened? Uh, we just got hit by back markers. Ah, uh, that's always unfortunate. Uh, Les, do you have anything um, to ask? Well, of course I do. Ted, uh, welcome into the booth and uh, great to have you here uh, with the, uh, uh, the 244 HWT Lexus. So how's that beast doing down these uh, down, down this track, down that, especially down that Mistral Straight? What sort of speeds are we talking about? Well, at the moment, we, we were doing 290 kilometers. Um, nothing can pass us, but we can overtake everything. Yeah. Um, but at the minute, we've got an eight kilometer, uh, eight kilometer mark, uh, tailwind. So we get 292. Wow, that's uh, that's quite some speed. I mean, I, I remember from a personal uh, experience, I remember running it in the uh, in the night out, as you know, and uh, down at Paul Ricard, um, myself in the Lexus. And I was running quite a high wing and I was still able to achieve, especially in the slipstream, I was still able to achieve well into the 290s. But I suppose with 38 seconds of damage, that's probably quite hindering quite, quite a lot of your top end speed as well, I would have thought, is it? Nope, it's not affecting the car whatsoever, but Tom Bryant has just got us a second drive through. So I, I will be shouting at him when I go back over. <laughs> oh dear, okay, yeah, classic um, Paul Ricard. With classic like, yeah, Tom, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, you're more no. than welcome to say that if you want, but your teammate. But no, it's uh, it's unfortunate to hear. And um, But I just wondered, you know, I, I've heard that Split 2 hasn't had any, uh, any rain at all yet. I'm not saying it won't happen just yet, as we now witness the 723 uh, in 21st overall position. Uh, out here in split one has also managed to get themselves a drive through uh, most likely for track limits as well. well we'll find out for definite but um but yeah i was just wondering you know uh, with the with the damage um i take it most of that side impact um if, you, if you're not really suffering too much with uh, top end speed yeah um, so but what, what how have you found it with the tires especially with the the, uh, the limited tire sets so we've seen a few people get punctures we've seen another lexus get a puncture um earlier on in the race so we were quite scared to see what the tire because tom's better on tires than me but he is slower but he's because he's looking after them more i just go full beans but luckily it cooled down enough for my double that i could just keep doing quick laps yep. so it wasn't it wasn't too bad the car felt fine it was the rears just dropped pressure and the rears decided to slide but it's the front left and we noticed uh i think on Kevin, Bo Kevin Boss's car, the really slow car, they got a puncture as well, apparently, so... Oh, okay, it's, well, uh, due, due to lack of pressure, then obviously getting the... Uh, I the think it's just tyre wear. Yeah, oh, tyre wear, okay, I yeah, think it's the heat and the tyre wear. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's... It's been difficult for a few people. A lot of people are getting drive through to the track limits. I think there's a few teams on at least four or five PTs at the moment, so... I don't know if it's uh, tyres they're struggling with, or, or is yeah, it... Yeah, well, it could be a bit of both. I mean, obviously, um, in Split 2, and people that don't know, we do have 
uh, other classes as well. We've got the silver uh, and and the uh, the AMs as well. And uh, maybe there might be a bit of uh, maybe a bit of inexperience cause that, or maybe just a case like you just said, you, tire wear, just tire wear causing it. And um, it's interesting you say about uh, about Tom. Obviously, one of your teammates. But obviously, don't forget you do have another teammate in Voitcher, uh, Rebecca as well. How's how's they gone? Yeah, well, Rebecca is not in the race today with us. He'll be joining. It'll be, it'll be me and him for Kota, and it'll be me, Tom, Rebecca, and we'll have another teammate, uh, Ethan, joining us for 24. So it's just me and Tom today. Oh, sorry, I, do, I got the information that, on. Yeah, that is fine. Oh, no, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. Ryback is excited to get into the Lexus. He thought he was getting in this for this race, uh, but Tom wanted to do it, try and do it as a, a double. Yeah. Um, and then, how how physical have you found it? You know, in regards to you know, just just so we can give a couple of the viewers that have, maybe haven't done the endurance events before. You know, how, how have you found it in regards to, because obviously just the two of you, you know, you're looking probably at a minimum, or sorry, uh, you know, you're looking at about six hours each roughly, aren't you, if you split it evenly, but um, how, have you, how have you found it so far physically? Uh, I'm broken. <laughs> you're broken. I I'm mean, I'm for, for once, I'm actually, I, I, I ache. I have not ached like this since I started sim racing. I don't yeah. know if it's the car or it's the double sim or it's the track, because I haven't done an endurance hit before. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, how how long have you driven so far, Ted? I've done four hours twenty. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you, well, I've done four stints. I've done, I've done lot, all. Yeah. I've done s the full sixty-five ish. Yeah. So yeah. I've got one more to do for the final with fresh sets. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, you know. You say you're in, was it P5 in class, you say? Is it? We're P5, we're P4 at the minute. Obviously, Tom's got his drive through. So, yeah, we're, we're about net net P6 or P7, I would say. Okay. Well, there's still plenty of time, Ted, for you guys to, to claw it back and, and potentially, uh, get, you know, get that P5 back maybe, or, you know, maybe even better. Who knows? I mean, especially with the amount of drive throughs that have, uh, you, you're saying has appeared, uh, you know, within your split. Who knows what could happen? But um, any, any last, last questions there, Dan? No, that, uh, that you don't sound that tight, but um, I wish you good luck in Split 2 and hopefully you guys can reduce the drive tra drive tools to a minimum. Yeah, thank you, you two. Uh, we'll try and keep them to a minimum, but we've uh, we've been collecting them too, too easily. Thank you. Well, just, ju just, just lastly, Ted, is there any uh, any shout-out you want to give out to, you know, maybe some family, friends at home, or even just your teammates? Uh, I want to shout-out my girlfriend. Or just yeah, she's been very quiet today. She's been very good. She's still been playing her games, but she's chilling out. Wah! <laughs> Getting Ash laughing at me because I said a, a silly word. Ted, Ted, live edit. You might want to try that again. Start it. Uh, oh, thanks, Jesse. I'll start over. Katrina's been amazing. Um, I just want to say thank you. She, she looks after me. She got me. So, she got me energy drink earlier, so to keep me going. I want to say thanks, Tom, for letting me drive. Oh, thanks, Jesus. Uh, Martin Lauren, because uh, it's his setup we're running. So. Oh, okay, interesting. Not not gone with the uh, the, the the go setups, no. No, because it's not it's not a Paul Ricard setup. Ah, okay. Interesting. We we don't yeah. we don't have any wing. Oh, Ooh. okay, okay. Whereas the yeah. other Lexuses have a lot more downfalls, uh, so that's why we can get to the speed we can. Yeah, yeah. No, like you said, you know, we get up to like 292 down that straight. It's uh, there has to be a considerable less amount of wing uh, than most people already. But uh, no, thank you very much, Ted, for joining us the, uh, in the booth. And um, I wish you you guys all the best for the rest of the race. And hopefully you can claw back some positions after doing that drive through. And, um, and fingers crossed, those energy drinks can be delivered a few more and uh, maybe some biscuits. I, I do recommend Ooh. biscuits. Maybe biscuits some and cream. tea. Biscuits yes. and tea, see, there we go. Um, Again. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, like I said, Ted, uh, thanks very much for joining us and uh, we wish you all the best for you the rest of your race. Thank you and I hope you have a good uh, broadcast. Thank you. Thank you again. Cheers, Ted. Bye. Okay, we're, uh, we're now on board with the 797 with Martin Grady and the RCI Sports Bentley. And uh, still in P7 at the moment, but as you can see, very, very close now to the back of uh, Southgate there in the 316 BMW. Uh, yeah, just by half a second. Sorry, Dan, go on. 
S797 is coming back again, of course, as we said earlier, uh, they did have some technical problems, lost the lap, but Martin Grady is out in full force, but also Jordan Daly as his teammate, a very fast driver, we've seen him on RCI plenty of times this year but uh, again they're just closing up closing up i love to see the cap coming down and down and that bmw less is quick on a straight but that bentley might be even quicker with if i'm not mistaken uh, a v8 in the front there for possibly both cars and on the back straight you can see martin grady gaining and gaining and this could be well a position up for martin grady in the bentley but just doesn't have the legs and especially with the bmw having the slipstream of the front Ferrari in front, Martin Grady just doesn't have the legs quite yet for a position change. Uh, so we'll see that po probably in the future, but he's just closing up less and I'm quite excited um, when Martin Grady will overtake P6. Yes, as we can see again, very, very close there with the Aston Martin uh, as well. So it's, yeah, it was quite a surprise actually to see uh, the, the, the difference in speed as they pulled out of the slipstream yes. uh, would probably indicate a little bit more downforce being added to that car than what we thought, but um, sort of relying on that slipstream to really get the, uh, the pull along uh, to hopefully make that move. But unfortunately for that particular lap, it wasn't meant to be and um, uh, and we go on for another. But of course, we, we look at Southcote now, has also made a position because they got past uh, Hoonamakers uh, in, in, the, in the Aston Martin. As we see now, Martin Grady doing the same down the start, finish straight. As we look at watch them going into turn one indeed yeah I've, i confused them with ferrari somehow but martin grady gaining indeed a position coming into t1 and so um, he might if he can chase down south court in the bmw could make his way in the top five and i think that they will be very rewarding with their technical issue um, and it will be a morale boost for both drivers probably less oh yeah definitely and um Mark Grady now has got to pick up the pieces and get that gap closed back down uh, to the back of the BMW and uh, now they've got that overtake onto into P6 sorry um, as we now go on board with them uh, because we, we'll actually get to see the top speed I think as well um, as we go down here and this is obviously out of the toe so this is going to be interesting just to see what the, the car is capable of uh, out of the toe um, but uh, yeah we really did see the speed difference didn't we uh, as he pulled out and I'm just yes. interested as we now get towards the end of the Mistral Strait, we're going to touch it about 283, 284 uh, kilometers an hour. So in the slipstream, I would have thought probably somewhere, somewhere nearer to, to 290. So incredible speed difference. Now. Yeah, but look at the limiter. Uh, it, the limiter was uh, full on the LEDs, so that's probably the top speed um, the Bentley has, if I'm not mistaken. I could be uh, not. I could be mistaken, of course, but we'll probably see that in the future. But if that's the case then you can take some more rear wing anyway and have some more rear downforce and that would be really good for the Bentley because uh, in Denver cars you don't really lose straight line speed in comparison to what that Bentley is capable of and so you can use that really as an advantage and that could possibly be one of the advantages P1 have because they have a lead over two laps now that could come down in the future I don't know if, if Kleine and Engman already uh, did their uh, did a pit stop um, so we'll have to see that in the future. Chico Leintvaar currently driving for So Called Racing in the 317. And I wanted to touch on less the physical aspect of this race because we have a few drivers and a few teams that are driving uh, with a duo instead of a trio. And so you have six hours each. And that's going to be really difficult not only physically and mentally because that third person uh, if you're driving with a frio is could really sort of let's call it keep your sanity um, because now you're just with two drivers all the time uh, and sometimes that third driver can be really the key to you know let some other driver take an extra bathroom break or maybe take a shower in the middle of a race and get some refreshments um, so driving as a geo is really physically and mentally uh, draining I think Les yeah I mean obviously uh, I mean I, we've, we always take the extra driver as a team personally uh, we always try and do that you know take the maximum limit we can just to 
allow everyone to have a fair go, but also we know how uh, physically demanding it can be. I'm not saying everyone's set up is the same. Some people have uh, no force feedback turned on at all and uh, decide to go that route. But, um, but yeah, no, it can be very, uh, very demanding. And um, obviously it's, it's nice to have that uh, reliant on other team members that can take over and you don't necessarily lose the concentration and have silly mistakes happen. But um, I must say we have, um, we have had uh, Martin Lawrence in chat, in the YouTube chat, uh, telling us the 287, sorry, 287 is the absolute limit uh, of that Bentley, um, where they apparently they're saying that obviously that hits the limit, and any more than that, the pistons will then be going out into the, out into the stratosphere. So maybe a little bit over OTT uh, on the description there, but uh, we get what you're getting at, and thank you very much, Martin, for, for chipping in and letting us know. But um, we've been we've been joined in in uh, in the booth here by uh, another driver, Dan. Yeah, more split two perspective for us here commentating split one and viewing split one, of course. Uh, Matt Malcolm driving for uh, the number 99, not cheap racing. He's currently inside the top 10. Welcome, Matt Malcolm. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really well. I think right now we're currently, currently holding strong for P9, but it's not really our ideal. But a couple setbacks and a couple drive throughs, but all in all, I think. I think we can be quite proud of ourselves for what we are. You're driving with, um, I think, four drivers in total, is that correct? Yeah, that is, yeah. So we've got, uh, mm. obviously, we've got drivers all across the world. We've got one of, one of our drivers from, is from Singapore, the other one's uh, Germany, and the both of us are both, both from the UK. That's great. And you guys are driving a Ferrari. We've talked about it before, tire management. How is that Ferrari going on with the tires? Uh, I think it's actually not too bad. I think a lot of the time with these, um, it's just matter, it's more of a matter of getting the setup right because um, I did make a couple of slight recommendations to put for this uh, one here. And I think it's holding off better than say some of the other setups that we have tried before, but I think the Ferrari is not too bad. I think we, I mean, you've seen it before with other, um, in our series. I know Daily did that before with the Suzuka and the Nidal series, and that kind of paid off for him as well, but not, not as much as it should. But you never know. All right, that's interesting. I'm going to pass you off to my partner in crime, Les. Uh, do you have anything to add? <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Uh, yes, uh, Malcolm, um, obviously, raced with yourself quite a few times over the, uh, over the months and years and within RCI and, um, I just, it's, it's great to see you in the world tour. Uh, not sheep racing. So, uh, out of interest, where did that name come from? Well, there's, uh, well, to start off with, it's sort of a small, I don't know the full history because I wasn't the original group members, but I do know for a certain fact there was a content creator that we all follow named Sheep. Uh, we tried to arrange a team and he didn't join. So we decided to name ourselves an iron, irony called Not Sheep Racing. At least that's the <laughs> story I've been told anyway so that's that's great I mean it, you know everyone has their own ways of coming up with names and uh, there's nothing better than you know using a bit of irony uh, in some of the names as well but um no yeah I mean uh, Mike Mike one of your team members as well again another another, another guy that I've uh, raced with quite a lot and always very respectable um but I must ask what's the uh, the deep the demonic livery all about oh right Yes, so the demonic livery was something that uh, we, originally we were just planning to just use our box standard, not sheep racing. And then I just kind of had a bit of an inspiration. Um, I figured we'd try something that was a little bit different this time. And one of the one of our person who we used to make the content creators emotes made that sort of design before. Kind of borrowed it, per se and kind of just made some sort of like demonic sort of look to it. So I, just, I think we'll go with something that's a little bit different than say what we currently have used in previous times. So and are I think, you, uh, think, are you, oh sorry, go on man. I just thought, no, 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 I do apologize. I, it just as was obviously something that just looked cool. Well, why not? You know, you know, everyone's got their, got their thing and uh, you know, is it, is it something, livery, something you enjoy doing? Is it a lot of, you know, do you do a lot of liveries or is it this your first? Hey, no, I've, you've probably seen a few of my liveries before, like the Japanese livery. I've made the most the most recent Ferrari one I've been using. That is one of my that was actually my uh, second ever livery I've ever made. The first one was actually that Japanese livery. 
And then and this is officially my third one that I've been working on. But I've got a few other ones I've been working on. Still trying to experiment something that, um, not just in general racing, but something that identifies with me. So you'll probably see me in the Night Owl next series with a different car, different new, different concept of the way I want to do my liveries. That's great, Malcolm. And, you know, liveries for a lot of people, um, including myself, are... Uh, uh, are very difficult to do. Um, I'm not saying you don't find it difficult, but it is. It's not something I'm. Uh, I'm very uh, dab at. But, uh, oh, but uh, yours is an inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I've got to hold my hands up and say that I have to have them made for me. And uh, Callum Kerrigan is normally my my go-to guy, or, or Tim Ireland. He's another good one uh, for, for mm. doing my livery. So I must. I must hold my hands up and say they're definitely not mine. But all you know, my own version. But uh, but no, just going back to the racing. Uh, obviously, you've already alluded to a split two. Um, uh, Gert, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try and pronounce the, the, the name. Uh, Gertz, Gertz, T uh, Speed Racing of, of uh, put in the chat. Um, there appears to be uh, quite a few um, drive-throughs going on in split two, like Ted's already alluded to. But uh, there seems to be some teams that have even had sort of you know six to eight drive-throughs already uh, you know, per car. Uh, going on is that something you've seen or you know have you had any drive throughs yourself uh well so far we've only had two well, one of them was mostly my fault for the one of them because um you know just obviously the ferrari driven that car for a long time it, 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 it has very limited um i think it's more of certainly the car that's more mechanically um, inclined when it comes to its grip compared to aerodynamics it's a little bit harder on the high speed corner so there is some bits and pieces where you, you're kind of going over that edge, but I'm not sure about the other cars. Um, I'm not. I don't want to say it's driver skill because a lot of these drivers are actually pretty good. But sometimes it's just the way the cars are set up. Sometimes it's the double stinting. I think that's also come into play as well with the increased tire wear. So I think it's just a mixture of people not get. I wouldn't say. It's, I would more say it's people not getting used to double stinting on the on the same tire. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, from my experience, you know, double stint with those tyres, it is hard work. Um, there is a lot of concentration that has to go in. And, um, you know, it's not a surprise to see teams getting drive throughs, but, um, you know, it is, you know, to hear of, of that many in, 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 one, in one race is quite unusual. So I just wondered if there was anything else going on. But, um, you know, just, just lastly, um, regards to your, your web that's going on in your split, I've already mentioned, you know, how we, as a you know, as RCI, I always try and make sure that the servers are, are set the same, uh, and we try and get the weather systems uh, you know to run in in sync. They're all set the same. Obviously, so far as as far as I've heard, Split Two hasn't had rain yet, whereas Split One has, uh, uh, merely just a short shower. But is there any any forecast at the moment? It looks like it might rain. Nope, still cloudy as ever. Just the winds picking up. But again, we haven't had any rain whatsoever. It goes from cloudy to overcast all the time. But I mean, I mean, it's it adds a level of challenge as well because it just means you have now have to depend on double stinting your tires. Maybe some people who have been hoping for rain all all day might have not had the opportunity. So again, it's really sort of dependent on where you stand. I think we're quite happy because we've kind of managed our tires the whole way around, so we've got a good rotation going on for for till the end of the race. So. I think it really more depends on whether or not you really wanted the rain today or you were just expecting it not to happen. Is, it, is rain something that you guys as a team uh, are prepared for or even look forward to? I mean, we do hope for rain, of course. Obviously, it just gives us more of a chance to give us more new tyres going through the drive starts. But I, f I think from our commonplace, from previous experiences, we just kind of know if the rain, if you're expecting rain, it's not going to come. <laughs> Yes, I must say, uh, the way that the luck seems to go when it goes regards to sort of preparing yourself for rain, nine times out of ten it doesn't arrive. And um, but no, listen, Malcolm, I want to thank you very much for for coming into the the uh, the booth and joining us here in the commentary. Uh, is there any sort of shout outs you want to you want to give out to to you know for your team or maybe family or friends? Just a shout out to everyone. Just get get your head down, get yourself into the position you want to be in. That's great. Uh, well, thank you very much, Malcolm, again. And um, I wish you and the uh, not, <laughs> not Sheep Racing team all the best. <laughs> and uh, fingers crossed you can have a great result today and, um, and, and go and have fun. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll catch you guys next time. Yes, thank you very much, Malcolm.
Oh, well, Dan, we're going back to track, and I now see that the 727 has a drive through, and I'm assuming that'll be for track limits. Um, I must say, I do believe the 727's already had a drive through. I don't know if you've noticed that, Dan. Uh, yes, I did notice uh, well, they have a drive through. If they did have any other drive throughs, I am not sure. But we touched upon it before, and we saw, I think it's the car of Hellman, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, got a drive through and therefore, well, uh, that, that wasn't ideal. And we said, well, he wouldn't be the last. And uh, we have seen a couple of drive throughs during uh, that time in the future. And uh, there will probably be some even more drive throughs less. So um, interesting to see. But um, yeah, I can't imagine it's the last one. Yeah, no, I just as we see there, as they leave pit lane, it's something that the cards as uh, an added extra to I suppose where drivers really have to be careful and yes. rely on their teammates to communicate when people are coming out of the pits and equally the guys leaving pits they need to be communicated to to allow the, you know, their teammates to let them know of anyone coming past it's it's such a dangerous uh, exit really I mean obviously you've got to keep your eyes open I mean uh, I've been a culprit myself you know coming down that start finish straight looking down at the dash and something, look back up and realise there's a car exit in the pit lane. So it's one of those, uh, you know, you really have to be quite careful. And equally, pit entry um, is quite a tricky one here. Keep him uh, to the right of that white line um, as we get a nice view here of the pit exit. You can see where the normal racing line is. It's, it's quite easily uh, accidents do happen. Yeah, and for pit entry speaking, they haven't updated this track on the Santa Corsa Competizione uh, since I think it is 2021, because since 2022 they did update it, and now it's uh, you can come into pit lane uh, when you, not even, when you enter the second to last corner or exit the second to last corner, something like that. Um, so they have updated that, but in ACC uh, that is not the case. So both pit entry and pit exit are pretty dangerous. However, however, you know the advantage for having such a strange pit entry is not getting a speed limiter or drive through for speeding in pit lane because you've already slowed down a lot because you re really need to take a sharp turn and you need to stay in the white lines. So that's really interesting. So you know, um, every disadvantage has its advantage. We say in the Netherlands, and for power cars, pit entry speaking wise, that certainly is the case. As we see, the 969 McLaren almost taking a track limit there. Again, so sensitive power cars for those track limits, and we see it once again. But uh, yes, less indeed, those pit entries and exits are quite dangerous certainly are and um yeah we've i've just seen in chat as well that we were uh, we were experiencing well we've seen it on the on tv as well you know you can see this lovely sunset that's another added extra uh you know something else to think about you know you've got yes. uh, the sunset in uh currently on the track and it can add a bit of uh, a bit of difficulty to some of the drivers you know depending on what equipment they're using uh but we um you know it, it, for most people that aren't running VR, it's not too much of an issue, but some people that do run VR, that Ooh. sunset can be really, really tricky. And um, you can now go, you can now see that Martin Gray's caught right on the back now of Southcott uh, in that BMW, the 316, and uh, it's caught right back. I did notice uh, only only a lap ago that they were about a second behind, so it's interesting as we see now Martin Gray uh. diving into the pit. So, oh, oh, my, oh he's got a drive through. He's got a drive through indeed. That's very interesting. How did that happen? Because we well we didn't see him got some sort of a uh, of a track limit there, but it must have happened early in the lap. Martin Grady has a drive through, uh, unexpected, and it will damage their race even further. They were so close to getting that P5, but alas, they have a drive through. Who the market is coming in as well? Does that possibly help? And I think because. Martin Grady, uh, oh, they have exited the pit lane. So it must have happened earlier in the lap. We see two McLarens battling the number 45 against the 969 McLaren. That is Yannick Pastuchka down the inside, overtaking John Racer for the top 10 spot in the race. And uh, that's a really lovely move. They didn't make it too hard, John Racer. So, you know, he's, he might be thinking about the long term race, but SPH. E motorsport gaining a position in the race and currently driving inside the top 10. 
certainly are. And when you course, when you think about the classes, that's obviously P8 uh, or net P8 overall for, for them. So, yeah, a great overtake there. Um, like you said, you know, I think John Arraza did, uh, did sort of uh, back off a little bit just to allow for a safe uh, a safe overtake. Um, so that was uh, that was good of them. I think think of the long game, but it's still, you know, two hours to go. Um, it's probably the wise decision. And like you said, probably on different strategies as well. So with tyres uh, coming into it, as we've already talked about, and um, with the lack of rain that we've got so far, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but we've still got, like I said, just over two hours to go. And a, quite a bit of wind now. We're now up to nine kilometres an hour. Um, but yeah, Yannick Pastuka, Pastuka, sorry, uh, getting that position there into the top 10 overall. And uh, on, on they go. But I do wonder if they're on fresher tyres there now. Yeah, indeed, uh, probably, likely, um, but, you know, it's always a guess, and especially for the Split 1 drivers, uh, you can get into our uh, commentator's box for an interview. We would love, not all of you, because that would be a little too busy, but for, if you like, come into the EU box and uh, we'll have you interviewed, sh show your perspective on how the race is going, so please do if you can um, uh, enter the EU uh, com box, if I'm green room, I'm sorry, I uh, hear it in my ear from a lovely um, broadcaster, Ash Baby, who's still there. Um, but yeah, do come in if you like, as we see a little Ferrari fight here. Richter defending, not really defending, but losing a position to Rohold in the 190 Ferrari. That's a really good overtake from then. And if you ever wondered, what those stripes are on Paul Ricard because yes it is for decoration but you could also get quite lost in them but if you ever wondered for what they are the blue stripes is for slowing you down a little bit and if you get on the red stripes especially when you spin uh, they have more grip than uh, the normal track and the blue stripes so that means uh, you get slowed down faster that is a little bit of a semi solution to the gravel traps they have taken away uh, in the past so if you spin out in real life i don't know if it works in acc as well but in real life and uh, you get to those red stripes you will get slowed down quickly um, because those red stripes have more grip martin grady they did serve their drive through i think a lap ago and they are now coming in for their actual pit stop I think Jordan Daly is going to take over the wheel, correct me if I'm wrong, so don't pin me on it. Uh, because Martin Grady has been driving for a while. We can see Cliff Bulker driving for ACC Vlaanderen. Their race is going fine, currently in P6. Uh, we have seen a lot and a lot is still to happen as the track temperature is still going down less. It certainly is, and uh, with the wind picking up as well, uh, that's going to cool off the, uh, the surface temperature. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we see, uh, like you said, we saw uh, Grady coming in for a bit stop, but we've also seen them come out still in the car. Now, I have heard today, unfortunately, uh, uh, Jordan Daly uh, is not uh, feeling great, a bit under the weather, so uh, maybe oh. uh, Grady's taking one for the team there and just and taking some extra long stints, and possibly uh, a reason for that drive through, who knows? But um, I'm sure we'll find out as, uh, as the race proceeds, but also maybe you know once the, the race is over. But uh, interesting, you talk about the uh, the stripes around the track. Like you said, not just for decoration, uh, they are they are used to slow the cars down. Like you said, instead of the gravel traps. Um, for those uh, that want to know a little bit more about it, it's it's kind of like sandpaper. I think it's probably the best way to put it. Yes. You've got your, a finer grit sandpaper in the blue, and then once you get to the red, it's that that coarser grit. Uh, which is designed to, for more friction, and then obviously uh, the tyres will then rub up against those those bits of grit, and then obviously slow the car down considerably once you get into that red. But um, yeah, it's, it's probably one of the probably one of the only tracks I know of that do that kind of uh, system. I think grass and gravel is normally the, the or sorry, say is norm is the norm around most tracks. But um, yeah, it's interesting they do that around here. And like I said, it does look quite kind of cool, really, uh, with those stripes. But, um, but yeah, that's quite rightly, like you said, the further you go out, the more red you get into, the, 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 the faster you'll be slowed down. But um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 a, it's, it's one of those tracks, like I said before, it's not one of my favourite tracks, but um, it's fast flowing. But like we said as well, we, you know, we've got some slow corners, which you know, for, uh, you know, for anyone that likes doing setups, 
Well, I find one of these, this track, or this type of track, is definitely particularly hard to set up for. Yeah, indeed, and especially because, you know, it's so technical. Uh, it has some sort of everything. Um, but, of course, what do helps is the long straight, and this is a track with uh, the, especially that long right corner, I can't remember the exact one uh, at the top right at the corner, um, is difficult if you don't have a lot of downforce, but of course you don't want to have too much downforce because you have a huge back straight. So that's probably why it's so difficult because you don't want to lose too much time on the straights, but you also don't want to lose too much time in the corners as well. And that's why you should really know your own qualities and your car's qualities. Because, of course, if you take off rear wing, you will have less understeer exiting the corner, or you will have more oversteer exiting the corner. So it's really, again, a test for your skills and a test on your setup management as well as. Yeah, it is. And um, it's, yeah, it's. <laughs> That's why you have teammates, isn't it? You've all got to be able to, to drive that car uh, comfortably, you know, and fast as or as fast as possible anyway. Hence, you know, the setups being important, um, being able to know how to manage the tyres, especially like we said, and we've already alluded to, you know, in this particular uh, series, we're, we're running limited tyre sets, uh, and in this in this race, it's eight tyre sets. So, you know, it's knowing how to run those tyres with the setup that you're running uh, with your other teammates. So. Yeah, it's it's great, isn't it? That's that's why endurance racing for me is my favourite favourite form of uh, motorsport. It's uh, it's more of a team event than just the driver and the car. But um, yeah, and we see uh, we're now on board. Oh, sorry, we're now running with, should I say, the uh, number seven two seven and uh, Nathan Wisnowski is now driving the Wilbauer Racing Team's Ferrari. And um, I do wonder how these other Ferraris. I mean, obviously, I know about my Ferrari in, in, in our team how we're running it. I'm just intrigued to find out how everyone else has done it as well. It may be something I never find out, but um, yeah, it's just, it, it was, it, for us, it was uh, it was definitely a, uh, an interesting uh, setup uh, session that we had as a team. Uh, met, you know, a couple of us felt it quite, quite loose and then others felt it quite tight. And then before you know it, we're all sort of making adjustments. And then we came, suddenly came to a decision of one uh, which worked for all of us, and uh, thankfully, that particular setup has also been pretty good on tyres. I mean, in practice, it wasn't amazing, but um, in, on tyre wear, but certainly during the race, it's turned out to be uh, working quite well. But, um, but yeah, it's just it's just been quite interesting to find out what everyone else is up to. But um, yeah, well, we can see we got two hours to go. Um, like I said, it doesn't look like there's much rain on the way just yet. Um, with the track temperature coming down at 22 now, I think the tyres are going to be screaming less uh, as much as what they were anyway um, but uh, you know it'd be interesting to see uh, uh, sorry I've, uh, I've got a race wing play coming up that is Davy Hill in either the Mercedes or in the, uh, McCle or the BMW but I guess the Merce uh, BMW the 317 Davy Hill I think it really happened there he probably oh he got a drive through Davy Hill the Scotsman for Stone Cold Racing got a drive through and we've said it multiple times uh, the the first drive through wouldn't be the last one and the third drive through would also not be the last one and well Davy Hill, the Scotsman, getting a drive through and proving is correct in the commentary box. But uh, I can assure you, Hill will also not be the last drive through because we still have two hours uh, to go into the race. And you know, when you drive longer and longer, you will rack up more track limits, and so it's almost inevitable. Again, Rahold in that Ferrari overtook Richter a few laps ago, and now battling the Spaniard Calatayud in the 30 Mercedes. Cal Calatayud not making it in too difficult. In fact, he's already passed him before they get into the corner. So Carlos Calatayud will fall down in P17. Rahold doing a great job of getting that Ferrari up in the field. Currently P16 less. Yeah, it was a great move actually, and um, quite a surprise really to see the Mercedes not being able to out drag that Ferrari down the missile straight. I know, I know the Ferrari didn't have the slipstream, and maybe they just had a better exit out the uh, out that last turn before the straight. But um, but yeah, no, it's, it was a it was a good overtake. I, I do wonder actually going back to the race replay um, whether the the tool picked up 
a tiny bit of contact there with the Mercedes front splitter, just just touching the back of, uh, of Davy Hill's BMW. But, um, but yeah, we're uh, we. I, th I think that may be why the tool picked it up. But um, Davy Hill hasn't uh, picked up, uh, actually hasn't done the drive through yet. But, uh, we've got another race for the I think that may have been for the drive through. Just cutting that. It looked like they cut the track there. I don't know. We're, we're <laughs> not a lot happened there, but uh, we now have rain expected in 30 minutes, Dan. We now have rain expected in 30 minutes. Can you believe it? After all that chat about, you know, it doesn't look like it's coming. And then all of a sudden, ACC decides it's going to chuck some rain into the mix. So uh, our drivers and teams now are going to be really looking at what they can do. And then some people that have just taken pit stops are going to be a little bit uh, cheese off I would have thought because if it just weighed another half an hour I know stint time as the stuff comes into play but obviously uh, you know you're quite probably like I said quite cheesed off that they're gonna have to come back down pit road and uh, and take those uh, those wet tires now it is only light rain so with the amount of cars we've got on track and it's still quite relatively warm you might we might find that the track just doesn't get wet enough now it all depends on how much rain does come down um, but you know we, we may well see some teams elect just to stay on those slicks for as long as possible because of course you have that issue where if you run those those wet tires a bit too early on you can scrub them off too early and or if the rain's just not hard enough the wet tires don't really uh pay off but um of course you can have the flip side to that where when the rain stops and you put the dry tires on too quick then you can burn the dry tires out too quick so it's interesting dan you know acc loves some throws curveballs in and now in 30 minutes we do a bit of sprinkler rain. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? We've been talking about it, uh, well, my whole broadcast. And, you know, I was quite skeptical. Uh, three hours to go, it's already rained. It's probably not going to happen. I said that it is France. And once again, France proves why it's France. Because, uh, well, as Les said, we have uh, light rain expected in 30 minutes but that could of course become more let's see but um i i can imagine some drivers shaking their heads in the cockpits uh, currently uh, seeing the um, predicted weather because I, I can imagine we've we've they're thinking all right we've already had enough chaos we've already had rain it was fun let's let's keep it dry but uh, in fact it's gonna rain again less it certainly is, and um, what I'd be really interested to find out is, um, you know, with Jesse being our, our, our weather guy, you know, just just how much this rain's going to be. You know, is it going to be a light rain? Is it going to be a light, medium, heavy rain? It's it's one of those only Jesse can tell us that. So I'll be intrigued to find out later on uh, what kind of rain it would have been. But um, but yeah, no, it just throws it throws it back in the mix, doesn't it? And teams are going to be really thinking of strategies now. I mean, we've got um, we've got less than two hours to go, so. I know a lot of teams have just peered, so it'd be interesting to find out and uh, to find out what they all opt to do. But, you know, at the moment, we're just going to have to wait a little bit longer, Dan. I think we're all a little bit excited, I think, uh, with this rain coming. It just adds that bit of spice. Um, sorry, uh, I do apologise. It just seemed something a little bit funny from, from something in chat. But, uh, but yeah, so we've got, we got the rain coming with the strategies and all that coming into play. And um, I'm just intrigued, Dan. If you were to see that right now, you're on track. You've just come out the pits with slicks on. What's your first reaction? Um, again, shaking my head in the cockpit would probably be my reaction. But also, personally, I'm a little bit better in the rain. So I'd be happy. And I'm always, as a driver, I'm always in for chaos. I, I would give chaos a big hug if it was ever presented to me in person. Because, you know, a little bit of spice, make it happen. Um, personally, I like... Uh, adaptability i can fare well with adaptability in weather quite well um of course some drivers can better than others and so i can imagine some drivers not liking it some drivers thinking well yes we have chaos we could maybe gain some positions and some drivers maybe being a little bit afraid and that could give the possibility for some driver swaps of course you know you need to know your own qualities and if you do within a team you can say if i'm driving currently mm, i'm not really feeling comfortable in the rain hey guys could anyone else switch off we could also do in an extent 
uh, currently, let's say you're the team of Adam Dubiel, you have another teammate in the back saying, all right, well, it's going to rain in 30 minutes, I'm going to prepare in the rain for, you know, a training session, a practice session on another server, see how I do there and carry that experience over into this race. Those are all things you have to take into account as Adam Dubil trying to overtake the Mercedes of Darba there in the number 777. On the inside is doing it currently. Yes, we can see him in the mirrors again. Overtook Darba there for P7 in the race. And so the one Ferrari again climbing up in the field. Currently they have Beuge ahead in the number 2. That's ACC Vlaanderen if I'm correct. And so they will probably chase down that Aston Martin as quickly as they could. Of course, as a preference, probably before the rain hits. I must say that that did, uh, you know, Adam Deville there really did make that overtake look quite easy. Um, I'm sure it wasn't, um, but uh, I do wonder if maybe Joe Dorba there decided just to just to back off before they got to that corner, knowing that the rain's coming. And um, I'm going to have to say it. But ooh woo, we've got two lines of rain coming. We've got it coming. 30 minutes, 30 minutes time, we've got double line rain. So in Jesse's words, that would be a very light, medium, heavy rain. Uh, it's on its way, it's on its way. So it's really looking like we're going to have a wet track. So I would have said the slicks now are probably going to be out of the question. Um, and uh, we've got Richard Phillips in chat uh, also joining in and saying he, he, could, he simply couldn't repeat uh, on a family fr uh, friendly stream what he would have said when they saw the rain come in. So, yeah, it just uh, it, just, <laughs> it just goes to prove that uh, you know every driver has their own uh, their own thoughts of the rain. I personally love I love the wet, the, the, you know, I love a moist track. I've got to say, I love a moist track, and it just like I said, I just love the uh, I just love the, the spice it brings. It, it gives me another chance. Like I said, I'm I'm not the quickest driver in my team. I know that. I'm not silly. I'll be honest. I'm not. But when the rain comes, I like to think that I'm in the mix and uh, that's my time hopefully to shine and hopefully I don't make that mistake. And, uh, you know, we got that coming in 30 minutes and, um, and it, you know, like you said, Dan, you know, it brings, it brings other people into play in your team, doesn't it? Maybe drive a swap or, or whatever. But, you know, judging by the temperatures we've got now with the wind as well, with the, uh, the, the very light, medium, heavy rain coming in 30 minutes, it looks like we're going to be uh, in for a very, very, very moist track. Shall we take into account that not only it's gonna rain, but it's getting dark too. So possibly at the end of the rain, we will, if the rain of course continues, we will not only have a rain race, but we have a rain race in the night. And that's gonna be challenging. Uh, I think Paul Ricard is a little track, as you can see, P4 and P3 not coming into pit lane. I thought for a second in real life we would probably get a penalty for that, but feeling Engman for nearly on pace following, almost following Hellman there in pit lane, but currently uh, staying out. And so he will overtake, I think he did, does overtake um, Hellman therefore. Indeed he does. Uh, provisional of course, Philip Eggman probably needs to go and pit as well. How that will well fare at the end of the race is still a question to behold. And of course with rain uh, on the horizon everything can still happen. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It's a huge talking point now, isn't it? Uh, less how people will uh, well fare in this rain and uh, who will not. We could maybe see a uh, change for the lead. Who knows, we could see some crashes. Who knows, the rain could uh, really set up set up a really nice plot twist in uh, the 12-hour pole car session. And, well, I can't wait for the rain to hit the track. No, you, you and me both. And uh, it's certainly uh, it's certainly going to mix things up. Oh, and I've just seen uh, yes, the 797. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine Grady has picked up another drive through I mean, that's... Um, that's two in, I would say, 10, maybe 12 laps. Yes. Um, that's that's really unfortunate. Really pushing hard, I think, and just pushing it to the limit and over the limit just too many times and already picked up another drive through. So it just gets from bad to worse. Uh, you know, and I'm sure with that Bentley, it's, um, it certainly used to be, when I first started out in ACC, uh, it certainly used to be very good in the rain. Uh, I don't quite know what it's like now. I mean, we, we do nickname it the Boatly, so you never know. It might still be good in the rain. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they picked up this other drive-through and, um, 
yeah, they're going to have to come down and serve that. Now, that again is a bit unfortunate. I've just seen uh, Benjamin Harlan obviously come down pit lane. Again, unfortunate timing. Um, you know, with uh, Wolf Batushka now taking over the reins, uh, they're going to have to pit again, obviously, when the when the rain does arrive. Uh, uh, you know, and it's a, just another time down pit road. And if you can afford to, to, to eke out your stint all the way to the rain, then you, you might win out of it. But um, it's also about timing, isn't it? It's all not only with stint timing, but also timing with the tyres. You know, when's that track ready for wets? When's it ready for slicks? It's um, it just this this is why we love it. This is why we love the rain. It uh, it just brings that that extra spice to everything. Yeah, indeed. It's it's just gonna be big questions uh, we still have now, but those questions will be answered. Martin Grady serving his penalty currently, and it's such a shame. They were doing so great, had technical issues. They were driving B10, I think, a couple of hours ago uh, on the rise, but it, it, has all, it hasn't mattered currently because Martin Grady picked up a few um, drive-throughs. Of course, um, who's to blame? Paul Ricard is such a difficult track and with uh, Martin Grady taking one for the team because uh, Jordan Daly currently not feeling too well, it's also difficult to, you know, keep your head focused um, because a millimeter is all that's enough to get you yourself a track limit. So Paul Ricard again proving to be a really difficult ground and uh, well, as a racing driver you have to face every challenge that presented you as good as you can and sometimes it's just a difficult day for you Les. Yes and um, you know, when the rain comes we might even see uh, our lovely uh, live stewards getting involved a bit more as well with um, you know I forgot to mention as well how bad of me you know that we do have live stewarding today and really not all race but we've had them at the start and, and now we're gonna have them at the finish so anyone that is listening in uh, are in split one the, uh, the live stewarding uh, function is now available to be used uh, if needed or required um, but yeah, you've got to hand it out to the stewards as well and thank them very much for, for participating and, and making this this happen. And, you know, that's what that's what makes sort of sets us apart, really, isn't it? Is having the, uh, the commitment there from, from people like the stewards, the broadcasting team and event managers and, and you know, all admin, you know, really making RCI, you know, at the top there and you know, making these events happen. And, you know, that that's, we can't thank them enough, can we? No, indeed, uh, we can't thank them uh, enough. As we uh, as we see Brendan Klein and they're uh, driving for uh, DSRT, uh, the Dutch team currently doing great on French soil, and uh, see if they can uh, can do any better. Three laps is the gap though to Bridger. It's it's absolutely insane how well these guys are doing in the Bentley. As three laps ahead, of course they probably need still need to make a pit stop, but. It could, you know, turn out for them. I don't know when's the last time they did make a pit stop. If, if it would be like just now, like 10 minutes ago, probably, they can stay out and keep that plus three laps on their name and only pit when the weather hits again. So it's going to be really interesting how, uh, how that will uh, go on. And I'm not trying to curse them, but with one hour and 45 minutes to go, they already look like they have the... Um, you know the wind in the back but we still have uh, rain waiting on us to hit the track but Brendan Klein is doing a great job for its plus two laps now um, doing a great job for TSRT to uh, well keep that car in P2 yeah and like you said with the Dutch sim racing team really you know really getting on with it aren't they and uh, <clears throat> you know to, I believe they um, uh, to have the drive through as well you know it's uh, yeah, we're talking about silver class here. You know, silver class really putting it in the mix with the pro field. You know, up into P2, and they've been a P2 for quite some time. So you know, you've got to hand it to them and congratulate them for what they've done so far. Let's see what they're like in the rain. Um, as we now see Nico Kumpu come around with the rebound race in Mercedes, come around that 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 turn eight after the Mistral straight, almost getting it a bit sideways um, and keeping it just within track limits. Um, but I do believe, or I, my guess is, that Mercedes is running quite a bit of wing. To see them being caught down the straights quite a lot, I, I'm, you know, that's quite a grunty machine, shall we say. A big old V8 under the hood of that, that, that car, and you know, to see it getting caught down those straights so easily, I would have thought it must be running quite a bit of wing. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm getting told off in the uh, YouTube chat um, 
um, by uh, Grimley. If I did forget about race controllers as well, so we must thank all our staff for, for participating and making these events happen. Uh, how dare I forget them? Yeah, indeed, um, we couldn't do it without them. And we couldn't do it without you viewers and competitors at home as well. Without competitors there wouldn't be a competition, but without viewers there wouldn't be a reason to stream in the first place. So we thank you all from the bottom of our hearts that have watched us, are still watching. And if you don't mind, we talked about it before, but if you have 30 seconds, we also have this uh, streaming on Twitch. Uh, it's not as known as our YouTube, but it certainly is there. So if you have 30 seconds, drop a like over on Twitch, maybe sub, and we would appreciate you really, really greatly. As we can see, a good fight. Matt Stevens now, all of, I think, getting overtaken indeed by Kostinger there. Matt Stevens not making Kostinger's life too difficult, just trying to drive his race. And uh, Kostinger now promoting himself and his team up to P11 just before the rain hits less. Yeah, just before the rain is indeed, and um, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating. I would have thought roughly about 15 minutes now until we, until the rain should arrive, uh, if the weather forecast is correct. And um, but yeah, I think uh, Matt Stevens may be uh, on some some very very used tyres. Um, yeah, you know, that's I, you know, for Costinger there to uh, to get past as well. Um, you know, I'm not not saying they're not quick, but. You know, Matt Stevens was, was quite quick earlier on, so yeah, it's I would say it's probably on used tyres, and they're probably keeping them out as long as they can to get the wets or get ready for when the wets are needed, when that damp track or or very moist track comes along. But, um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's certainly set up to what's going to be a great finale to this race. Um, you know, we we've already said it. There's been so many teams already that have had their issues, and whether it be technical or whether it be you know, driver illness, or you know, or even just just mistakes uh, with another. Thing. Yeah, there are many instances for this race. I mean, we've already done over 10 hours of racing, and there's not been many instances that I've recalled anyway. Certainly in this race, uh, in this split. But, um, but yeah, there's been quite a few little mistakes that have caused these drive-throughs for track limits, and uh, and maybe one or two for for pit lane entrance violations, regards to speed limit as well. So. You know, so far, so good. But um, as we, as I say that, as we see Wolf Matuska in the 796 get the five-second penalty. Yeah, uh, indeed, that's, uh, it, it must have, uh, the, the, this probably, because live stewarding is back, uh, we did have live stewarding, I think, in the beginning of the race. It did go away uh, in, uh, for a few hours um but i think it's back now less so uh, oh 20 seconds as well now that's huge for p4 in um in the class currently and uh, p3 in uh, pro class currently i wonder what happened there maybe less can uh, give us some more information on that but it's gonna be horrible for your race it's uh, well it's, it's just as powerful as a drive to really maybe even more uh, and they will need to serve that uh, or at their penalty or at the end of their total race time but that's painful for RCIE Esports in p4 yes yeah, so i can say i have uh, checked in with the uh, with the stewards and they've reliably informed me that there was an incident on lap 307 in turn eight uh turn nine involving the 969 and the 796 and a 20 second penalty for the car 796 where the takeout with the position can't be returned due to the cars on different laps so unfortunately yes a uh, a 20 second uh, penalty there for for the takeout and just as i uh, said there hadn't been many instances i've gone and put that commentator's curse on them and uh, yeah a 20 second penalty has uh, has been applied so yeah, uh, intro puts another bit, uh, you know, another thing for them to deal with. Um, as we now go, uh, as we now see a battle here along the Mistral Strait with David Hill rapidly catching Neil Pimblot in the 46 drop in the hammer racing. Uh, as they get to turn eight, that fast right hander really trying to, you know, battle with that car to keep it uh, going around the all the way around without getting into track limits. And then this turn nine and turn 10 is so tricky trying to keep the car. You know, wanting to go in the direction you want it, it certainly wants to go in the different direction as you want it to go in. And uh, David Hill just getting a little bit wide there. I do hope they don't pick up a track warning for that. I would be surprised if they did because they did lose a, a lot of time, I would have thought. But uh, yeah, on, on to the next lap. But um, 
Uh, Richard Phillips is, uh, is confirmed in chat as well that, uh, that Matt Stevens um, is on older tyres. So, yeah, that'll be why the 707 RPMS uh, Simsports uh, 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 Porsche was uh, was a little bit on the, the slower side going down the uh, Mistress Ring. If you go back to old pictures of Bar Ricard when it just got um, got uh, made, um, you could say it's almost Laguna Seca because no, it didn't was as decorated as it is now. There was on the inside and on the outside with quite a lot of gravel traps and sand really in the paddock uh, where it would be literally right now. So you could compare it to Laguna Seca, which is actually funny. Uh, Paul Ricard, they hosted their first race in 1970 with a two liter sports car race. And well, the rest is history, as they say, hosted F1 for the last couple of years. Now back to our action. Uh, because, of course, it also hosts to the glorious RCI competition, uh, Matthias Sarenpa in uh, the number 45 McLaren coming out for Team Monkey Racing, doing a pretty good job. They did end a little bit higher last race, if I'm not mistaken, currently chasing down the very fast Lamborghini of Costinger. We have seen him. Um, up and down uh, the field, uh, really making a lot of progress um, in this race, especially in the latter stages of this race. And uh, well, my thoughts was our confirmed team monkey racing. Last time around, they did finish P8, provisional P12 for a finished position, but currently Jason Gossinger, so that could end up very differently. Certainly could, and uh, we did hear from their teammate uh, for the Team Monkey Racing, uh, Peter Varga, earlier on, of course, uh, in Split 2. Uh, and he did mention that uh, Team Monkey Racing were looking uh, for a top 10 in this race today. So if we look in the uh, the order for um, overall, they're in P12, but of course that's net P10 for their class. So they're sort of well within a chance of achieving their goals today. Um, obviously, Anything can happen still. We've still got just over an hour and a half to go with the rain in them and as well. I would say in less than 10 minutes. Uh, I would have thought, in fact, I'm pretty certain that's that's been at 10 minutes now for a good few minutes. So we're looking at, you know, seven or eight minutes. We're looking at a sprinkle of rain coming down and it's also going to get heavier as the time goes on. But um, we're now uh, see them getting right at the back of that, that Lamborghini now into turn one. Um, and again, there's another tricky corner. Try not to get track limits as they come into turn two and then obviously into turn three. But again, on the exit there, extremely hard to keep the car under control without getting over those track limits when you are pushing that car to the limit. And who knows what their tyres conditions are at the moment as well. So, and this is the thing, you know, us in the booth, we just don't know uh, what tyre strategy they're on. Um, we no. don't know how warm they are either, but they're getting a good run here onto the back straight, onto that Mistral straight. And they're well within a chance of getting in, in touch and distance of uh, getting past that uh, that Lamborghini even. Apart from the pit stop, it's like pre-season testing in F1. You don't know how the tires are, you don't know how the fuel loads are, and so you can't really judge anything. And uh, well, the McLaren coming a little bit closer to that very long right-hander at the back of the straight there, pulling down to the racing line, the monkey racing number 45 McLaren of Sarampa that is now driving up to De Bocher and so uh, he still needs to stay a little bit longer behind that Lamborghini as we can see the flames out of the back of that exhaust of the McLaren and it's also getting darker because well we can see the lights on every car have has turned down now if you probably have it automatically turned on for those that aren't aware in ACC you need to turn on your lights uh, if you get a message if you don't do that for three laps you either get disqualified or get a penalty um, but yeah again the track is getting darker and darker as the sun has almost gone completely down less it certainly has and uh, like you said with those headlights now shining bright on the on the racing surface we're now seeing Neil Pimlock in the number 46 dropping out of the racing uh, getting very close now to the back of uh, Davey Hill and uh, yeah no it's um, it's it's one of those things in ACC. It's, it, we're in that 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 stage now where you know there's an hour and a half to go. There's everything to lose, um, and they really have thrown it in the mix. 
uh, as we see the weather app now updating when it's going to see a lighter rain now in, the, in, in 30 minutes time. So it's going to be very similar to earlier on's uh, weather where we had, we had a light sprinkle going into a more of a heavy sprinkle as Jesse likes to put it, a very light heavy medium rain. Um, and then obviously getting lighter again and, uh, and then drying out. So we're, I think we're going to be looking at about 30 to 40 minutes of rain. Um, so we're actually, I think we're going to see a finish here um, on slicks or people that maybe think, actually, do you know what? We're going to go a little bit further on the, on the wets and then have the slicks towards the end to, to maybe gain more positions that way. DCFU I've been in this place before, but it's indeed very, very difficult. Um, and yeah, it's it's really a question mark because well, the weather in 30 minutes can still change. Of course, we have a wind of 10 kilometers, which is quite a lot. So that rain could easily flow of, of fly over us really quite quickly. But you know, again, those are all question marks which which have yet to be answered. Uh, what also needs to be answered is this battle. When will um, Sarampa overtake the Lamborghini uh, for Anthony Costinger of Anthony Costinger down in the last hairpin? Almost is it? Um, but yeah, the McLaren is still on the back and uh, it's not healthy for his tires as well because they are just getting dirty air yeah, and dirty air. So understeer, oversteer, you name it what's coming onto that McLaren. Uh, and he needs to get uh, a move done quickly if he wants to um, get his tires in a bit of a healthier condition. Uh, they aren't really a threat to a car behind or in front but to shoot. Pastuska currently driving in the 969 uh, McLaren having quite a bit of a gap if uh, if I'm correct there um, so interesting battle and on the straight now we could see a position uh, change of course on the Mistral if you have a good exit here maybe the team monkey racing with an obstruction can make a move on Kostinger but Kostinger has also a slipstream from a car that yet needs to be left yeah, and it, it's the difficult part, isn't it? You know, you, you get a good exit, you think you've got a great slipstream advantage, but then you realise there's a car in front of the Lamborghini. It's also getting a, a good slipstream as well. So, not as close as I thought, actually, that Lamborghini is the car in front. And, uh, and as we see now, going for the overtake and not quite making it. So, yeah, okay. they're getting closer and closer. Now, the other thing to think of as well, when these cars are behind uh, other cars and closely battling out, oh, as we see another of the go for the turns nine and ten oh they're nearly in contact we go around into the tight twisty part of the circuit and uh, they're trying everything they can to get past now what we've got to remember as well is these two are in different classes so that technically speaking they don't really need to race each other but it's all about pride you know we we've got drivers out there costing is obviously wanting to stay in front they may also want to be staying in front due to, to strategy um but you know really it's it's more pride than than, than most things you know you think about right now they want to stay, they're desperate to stay in front of that McLaren. So McLaren now mm. tries to go around the outside and start pretty straight. And they're even going slightly off track to try and make the maneuver. The costing it goes to block and as they go down into turn one, down. Yeah, indeed, an amazing party coming down to T1 now. The team Monkey Racing McLaren is, as Les said, trying everything to overtake that uh, Lamborghini of Costinger. But getting by is one thing. Staying ahead is another thing because Costinger, I think he has a good pace to match the McLaren as well. They're both pretty equal. If it wasn't, we did see the McLaren already overtaking the Lamborghini. So immediately, immediately when that McLaren overtakes the Lamborghini, I can suspect uh, he needs to rear, he needs to view his rear mirrors because the Lamborghini could say, you know, one hour and thirty minutes ago. What am I going to lose with this, this this fight? I don't have a threat to P13. P10 is way too much uh, of a gap ahead. And so, you know, I might as well fight because I'm not going to gain a position by not doing so anyway. But the McLaren has a beautiful tone now from the Ferrari ahead. And so on the racing line, he might be able to overtake Kostinger, but it's still a bit too difficult. Now, Kostinger needs to keep it, keep it within track limits. That's easier said than done, but he manages it. And so the Lamborghini manages to still uh, be ahead of the McLaren as we see in RCI East Coast car going really wide there. Don't know really which one that is, but uh, he lost time 
uh, either less and uh, as we can see on uh, the predicted weather only probably 20 minutes of rain less yep it's certainly looking that way um it's going to be a short and sweet shower but i'll tell you what it's going to bring some action i can guarantee you but um but what we what, what uh the tires has got to be really careful there um is not to get too angry as we now see the rain is starting to fall we've got the wipers are going on some of these windscreens Ooh. and it's starting to fall so the rain has started but uh just going back to uh the number 45 mclaren there uh matthias has really got to be quite careful to keep the keep his calm and composure uh, because they are racing someone uh, well as, as i say that i've just realized that costing is now pitted so they were battling and battling really for not a lot an awful lot of gain but costing it was probably trying to do that to, to eke it out to get to that pit stop and the track has already changed to greasy uh done yeah, and that uh, pit stop of Kostinga doesn't quite come at a good time because, well, you've just made a pit stop, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to wet? Probably not, because it's too dry for that. But if you go to dry, then you still need to make a pit stop when it's going to be wet. But, of course, uh, the rain could clear up in about 30 minutes and depends on the heaviness of the rain, you could say, all right, there are still a lot of cars driving on a track so a dry line will immediately form uh, if the rain if the rain isn't going to you know get quicker on the track isn't as heavy as maybe a lot of drivers would thought it would be so are you staying on dries are you staying on slicks as uh, Roald does a beautiful switchback there on the, the 888 Porsche. Can't quite manage to pull it off before we hit the straight, but he may. Oh, oh that's a little touch, and the Porsche just saves it of Roald. Roald backs off. That's really good sportsmanship there, but uh, that, that could almost end up in tears less. That uh, really could have done, and um, thankfully we didn't, we didn't see any tears, but. Uh... Rahul, as we watch the replay now, by the producer there from Ash Bibby. And uh, we're going to, as you say, got so quite done the switch back maneuver, looked great. And just a little tap there, just unsettles the Porsche uh, to then back on that on that Mistral straight. And um, Rahul really sort of backing off there to sort of symbolise that you know, they, they held their hands up and, and knew they'd done wrong. So, yeah, you know, on, on to the next battle, as they say. And, uh, you know, the, the rain really started to come down now. now interestingly say you know that some drivers are going to try and eke it out on the slicks but of course it depends on how many slick tires they got left you know if, if they've got enough sets left they could eat these out to the end of the rain and then maybe maybe pit for for slicks for that last that last magic hour of the race but um yeah it really is interesting now you know we've got uh as i see well Petushka's just gone up to b3 actually um i'm just wondering if uh, leonard actually had a bit of a uh, an issue but um yeah we're seeing a lot of cars now coming down into pit road yeah look at uh, pit pit uh, lane is getting full and fuller as you see brendan klein and also for D dsrt dutch racing team coming in as well and that would probably suggest that currently the track is too wet too damp to drive on on dry tires uh, and so everyone is coming in not really wanting to risk further uh, probably a spin or a crash because of the rain because you're getting nervous now you're probably correcting the car a little bit too much and uh, as we can see clearly the speed for those on the slicks are getting slower and slower uh, so it makes sense to go into pit lane uh, track is too wet it won't clear up in time and so <laughs> i'm just gonna uh, go and get the wet tires if you don't mind so it's gonna be interesting uh, to see those who uh, won't pit because a few are still on track on slicks. Uh, we saw Ferrari placed by the pit lane and not taking the slicks, which is quite interesting. But let the chaos commence. The rain is finally there. It certainly is, and uh, like you said, we, we have seen an awful lot of cars now come down pit road, an awful lot of left pit road. All Matuska's just literally ended pit road along with. Uh, uh, Mateus Sarimpa in the number 45 McLaren for Team Monkey Racing. So it looks like everyone's doing the same thing, really. I think we're all going down the the, uh, the idea of uh, it's too wet now, poor slicks. You're losing too much time. There's obviously a crossover time where where the slicks and the wets you know are going to be better than one or the other. Um, and a lot of the teams would have done their research and knew what sort of time they were aiming for. I, I noticed uh, my team, the number 46, dropping the hammer, racing Ferrari. 
they've come down pit road. Um, I did see their last pit, uh, sorry, their last lap time was in, was over two minutes. So it's time. It's time to come in. Let's get the wets on. Yes, you've got to compromise and, uh, and and come down pit road again. We know they're going to have to pit again due to stint timers. Because uh, those that don't know, in these uh, endurance events, there is a stint time um, of 65 minutes uh, per stint. Um, uh, so therefore, you have to be visiting pit road uh, before that 65 minute timer um, it, you know, uh, runs out. Uh, otherwise, you will be uh, having a penalty. But um, we now see Jordan Daly uh, now back in the car. Um, hope you're feeling a little bit better. Uh, maybe. You know, pop some of the old Beecham's uh, in there to in, in his gob to you know to make him feel feel a bit better and be able to cope with these last couple of stints. But um, you know, if there's anyone I know that can uh, can get around here quick and loves this track, it, it's Jordan Daly. And um, yeah, I'm sure he'll, he'll excel and he'll probably get that 797 back up where they belong. Yeah, Jordan Daly, we've seen it um, at RCI plenty of times. Drove in the rain at Daytona a couple of days ago uh, in our iRacing IMSA season. So uh, he could well fare in the rain today here as well. Jordan Daly in the, in the 797. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And we talked about it before. ACC doesn't have that... Uh, realistic wet line let's call it as i racing has they've got a static wet dry line um and so it's going to be really interesting to uh, see how drivers uh, well well fair in the rain with one hour and 22 minutes ago to go um you know this race really has turned on its head uh, as i mentioned before the plot twist has been given to us and maybe the plot twist um will we'll get bigger and bigger as we see some shuffling down and up the field. Um, the 797 Bentley, they uh, improved a position after a couple of pit stops and drive throughs They were P9, they are currently P8 and back on the way to possibly gain even more. Uh, but of course the rain uh, could um, could maybe, um, you know, do that, uh, do, do that not. So the rain is also getting heavier, I hear, and we can see that as we go to the top right uh, at the 10 minute plus rain, uh, plus medium uh, heavy rain, whatever Jesse Lee calls it. But, um, you know, it's going to be interesting, Les. It certainly is. Um, yeah, as you can see, uh, the, 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 the weather widget has really uh, shown us um, just, you know, I've, I feel educated now. You know, I really know what Jesse Lee was on about. You know, we have the light rain. Uh, we've now got the light medium rain uh, and what looks like light medium heavy rain on its way in 10. So, you know, I'm really, I'm really grateful for the ACC widget to, to really give us that information of what Jesse Lee was all on about in the first place. So, no, it's great to see. And um, I think this is a great time to, to really sort of thank our, our partners, you know, especially uh, when we've got people like AKE Sports, uh, we've got we've got um, uh, go setups. You know, this is a great example right now. You know, people have used their go setups, really using them to 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 their full potential today. I would have thought, you know, with the you know with the tricky conditions, but also, you know, you've got the uh, the the, the, uh, the tire set limits as well. We've got Sim Racing GP, we've got Fanatec, Driver 61 as well. Not and of course we can't forget racedepartment.com. Uh, so. You know, it's a great opportunity to just really thank our sponsors. It's, you know, it's for those guys that also help us out here at RCI to, to put on these events and uh, be able to broadcast them live to you as well. But, um, but yeah, you know, we've got Martin Lawrence, you know, still out in the lead, a very, very commanding lead, you know, still two laps ahead. You know, are they going to back off? No way. They're never going to back off. They're, they're going to be going hell for leather for the rest of this race. And, um, you know, even with this increased uh, chance of, maybe getting a track limits or, or even, you know, making a small mistake into one of the corners where they didn't expect to be as wet as what they thought and they lose it, you know, they still got that commanding lead and, and um, you know, with just over a, well, it's almost two lap lead. It's, uh, oh, as they go extremely wide there, you wouldn't be surprised they did get a track limit on that one there. But uh, of course, this is another thing, you know, all these drivers are going to be really quite concerned now. I know that our team, you know, we're on three track limits and have been since the first hour. Uh, you know, we're going to be thinking heavily now. You need to be really careful in these conditions, making sure that we keep it within those track limits and we don't get a silly little drive through just before the race finishes. Yeah, uh, and that's really interesting. But 
in uh, the rain. Uh, I've driven in the rain here, power cars. It tends to be more forgiving the track limits uh, when you are driving in the rain, which can only make sense because, you know, it's raining, you can miss such a breaking point, you understeer occurs more, oversteer occurs more, and the simulator knows that. So that's why um, drivers tend to be forgiven by the system for maybe accidentally uh, cutting a corner or accidentally going wide. Um, and so, I don't think we'll see any more drive throughs It's maybe a bold prediction, but because of the rain, if it keeps raining like this, the system will probably almost let everything go and think, you know, um, we won't have any more drive throughs today or track limits today. So I'm quite skeptical about uh, any more drive throughs but you know, anything is possible. Uh, we've literally seen everything here in this uh, 10 hours uh, we have already driven so it's gonna be interesting because it's gonna dry up as well in the next 30 minutes so i can't wait for the end of this race to unfold yes and uh nor can i um i really would like to uh as we see it on board now i don't know blake um driving around this mclaren for the steady start racing blue team um and now we can see jordan day i well, I've asked Ash if he can kindly put us on board uh, with Jordan. What I wanted to, to allude to here is just, just if you can watch the steering wheel inputs um, of this Bentley uh, with Jordan at the wheel. You're going to see uh, quite a lot of dancing around, should we say. Um, he's probably going to make it look a lot better than what I just saw uh, before when we were on board, because it's called, yeah, it's sod's law, isn't it? We go on board with Jordan, it makes it look easy. But what you're going to see, we think the police puddles are the police puddles this is start finish going. This is what we've got to deal with. Uh, all the drivers got to deal with right now. You know, it's going to be, you know, the braking uh, is going to have to be a lot earlier. We're going to have to be turning in a little bit earlier than normal and allowing the car just to have a little bit of a slide going. Wow, as we see a massive correction there by Jordan as he comes out on the exit of that, that curb. So, you know, I just wanted to show, you know, especially going into the fast right hand there after Mr. on the turn eight, you're going to see quite a lot of correction going on. And, I mean, look at look how wet that track is. That really is extremely wet, though. Yeah, it uh, is extremely wet, and you're going to be careful, otherwise, your aqua plane, Jordan Daly, almost collecting a McLaren there as they're both uh, trying to survive the torrential rain currently on the circuit of Paul Ricard. And, um, you know, it's going to be so difficult because if you hit just a, a bad patch of weather, you can aqua plane, and uh, it could it could be all end for you in this race so it's it's gonna be it is interesting actually um to see these drivers welfare in the race uh we touched upon it before and we watched the bentley hit a top speed of 283 in the wet it's 276 so the speed definitely increased here at a rainy circuit ball record and they're probably getting slower and slower still yeah, as we see, Jordan Daly did exactly what I thought he'd doing, soaring at the wheel there, trying to keep the rear end of that, that Bentley under control in these very, very wet conditions. But, um, but Dan, it's that time again. We've been joined in the booth uh, by another driver of another team who's kindly come in for an interview. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Hugo Doobie um, that's here from Prime Motorsport in Split 2. So, Hugo, um, how, how's it going for you over there in Split 2? All right, first, thank you for having us. No problem at all. It's going really well for us right now. We had some drama in the opening laps of the stint, of the race, sorry. But now we're sitting in P4 and podium is looking really doable now. So well, that's, that's excellent news. I mean, you, you say there's a podium on. I mean, how far behind are you uh, from P3? I think we, by the end of the stint, we should be around 15 seconds behind. Okay. Yeah, it's getting getting close, getting close. I mean, uh, I take it you've got you've got roughly about sort of just over an hour to go yourselves. And uh, any any rain on the way for you guys? Uh, no, no rain on the horizon. No, no rain at all. And um, I did hear earlier there hasn't been any rain as of yet. But uh, I don't know if you can see the pictures uh, that we're we're watching right now in split one. We have a very very wet track, uh, and the drivers here are really sort of uh, as we see a race replay coming up actually of uh, Adam De Bill uh, going up on the inside another Ferrari uh, getting a move done I think there might be a slight bit of contact uh, almost more contact there but um but yeah it's 
yeah, we've had we've had quite a bit of rain here. They, the, the drivers really are, you know, battling with these cars around this very very wet track. Um, it is going to get less, and there will be uh, a stopping of rain in around about sort of 20 30 minutes. And um, I'm just intrigued, actually, for you guys in Split Two. You know, did you guys uh, did you sort of set up for the for the wet conditions, or did you just think, you know, we'll go for a dry setup, you know, try and get the the, the stints for the dry tyres sorted, and then if the rain comes, it comes. We'll deal with it as and when. Well, we did plan for for the rain, for the rain, on the setup side especially. Yeah. But for planning, it was dry planning, and if the rain comes, we we throw everything out the window and we we try again. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, sorry, I must interrupt. I, we just seen the 969 actually of uh, Brutter off at the uh, the Wilma McLaren as unfortunately for SA, uh, SPHE Motorsport has uh, managed to pick up a driver and exactly what I was saying, Dan, um, you know, with these wet conditions, unfortunately, you, know, you can easily slip a wheel off, off track and it will drag you even further off track and, and before you know you get a drive through. But um, I will pass you over to Dan, uh, Hugo, but uh, just lastly, before I do, um, what was your what was your aim before the race even started? What, what, where were you hoping to, to finish? Well, we were hoping for a podium finish. And we, we qualified in pole, so we, oh, okay. we got it started really well, and yeah, stuff happened, but we're back. Yeah, that's great to hear. Oh, well, okay, Dan, any, any questions for yourself? Um, actually, everything has already been answered. I just want to ask you, is there anyone uh, you want to give a shout out to, maybe your team or some driver involved in the race in particular? Yeah, big shout out to guys from the team, especially Eric. Probably know him from from the um, Stuart and two team, and the man is a machine who knows to work magic on the Bentley. <laughs> and shout out also to Nicolas Keller from our team, who was today at the Nurburgring on extinguisher duty for his team in GT3. Oh wow! Oh, oh great! I, in real life, yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant stuff! And uh, managed to. Well, so are they are they back uh, at home now and uh, you know ready to jump in the car or are they? Are they sitting this one out? They are sitting this one out. Okay. Well, Hugo, thank you very much for joining us. I, I hope uh, that the race uh, brings exactly what it is that you wanted and um, you can finish on that podium. And, you know, 15 seconds, you never know. You can, it's all to play for still with over an hour to go. But uh, like I said, thank you very much for joining us. And um, let's wish uh, Prime Motorsport all the best for the, for the rest of the race. Yeah, thank you for having us. No worries at all. So, we're back with Martin Lawrence uh, with the RCI Esports Bentley. There's number 769 still motoring rounds and just doesn't seem anything, just nothing seems to phase him, does it, Dan? Oh, I appear to have lost Dan. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, as I was saying, uh, nothing really seems to phase him. Uh, you know, we've got Martin Lawrence in the car at the moment, but you know, we've seen Restrepin in there as well, and you know, just commanding lead. And even with the wet weather, it just doesn't appear to have. Uh, to have phased them at all but um yeah it's, it's a shame to see another drive through uh in the field there and um the silver class is really um it's really hotted up actually i'm trying to say heated up uh but um but yeah it's uh not an awful lot's changed i, I was expecting with the wet weather to for a lot of uh, position change and i think people have really sort of eased up a little bit knowing that there's only just over an hour left to go um where uh, you know it's still all to play for and it's been an awful long race and to, to mess everything up, you know, in the final stages would be uh, devastating for some teams and, you know, for others, it, it's a do or die moment, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, Dan, and uh, I, I think you're back. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I was just saying, I was just saying about, you know, we've got oh. Martin Lawrence uh, in P1. Oh, drive through got another for drive through. for ACC Vlaanderen. Yeah, go on, take it away. Yeah, uh, drive through for ACC Vlaanderen for, um, I think it's Chris Bulke, uh, Cliff Bulke, I'm sorry. But uh, indeed, uh, P2 in silver class currently, we saw a drive through popping up for the 969 of Pitterauf. And immediately after, a drive through for Cliff Bulke uh, coming out for ACC Vlaanderen in the number two, Aston Martin. So that's really interesting. Um, also, I just want to mention, we have a battle of Belgium versus the Netherlands. Uh, Kleinen, of course, driving for Dutch racing team. Bulke driving for ACC Vlaanderen. As always, if you weren't aware, a really tough battle going on with Belgium. 
um, drivers and Dutch drivers or Belgian people and Dutch people in particular. We always want to be the best of each other, but it's currently uh, going great for the Dutchies. Um, and not so great. Still P2, but currently not um, not winning the Battle of Luxembourg or the Benelux, let's say. But um, well, anyways, lots of drive-throughs. Uh, maybe a little bit of my like, commentators curse less. I said we'll get no more drive-throughs, but um, I get silenced pretty quickly. Yeah, you heard it for here first, guys. If um, anyone was watching this, uh, yeah, please by all means blame Dan for your drive-through. <laughs> Um, yeah, we commentate this curse, but um, it's that time again, Dan. We're gonna we're gonna have a little tea break. We're gonna maybe get another croissant or maybe a bit of French stick, I think. But uh, yeah, Ash is gonna put us on board with someone, and um, I think we're gonna go on board with the RCI Esports number seven six nine, Martin Lawrence at the wheel. Uh, hopefully, you'll uh, you'll get to see uh, the, the master at work, shall we say? Uh, probably not even soaring at the wheel like most of the other drivers are doing. But um, yeah, either way, we'll be right back.
and welcome back to the RCI uh, World Tour Round 2 at Paul Ricard where we've just had an outburst of rain and uh, it made that track extremely moist and the drivers were really battling it out with themselves more than anything to get that car in, in, in the right direction and get round in one piece but um, unfortunately we do rejoin and straight away we noticed that the uh, the number 317 of Davy Hill has uh, managed to get themselves a drive through uh, which uh, of course will promote the number 46 of dropping the hammer racing which I am part of so I'm a little bit happy but at the same time I'm disappointed to see that that's the way it's had to happen but um no yeah as we see another another uh, you know another victim of the drive through uh, sorry the track limits and then get themselves a drive through so that will promote the 46 when they do take that drive through but um We've had a great race so far. For anyone that hasn't, uh, you know, has missed most of the action, we've we've had a couple of spells of rain. We've had extended periods of dry uh, dryness, we say, and, uh, and and uh, and the drivers really having to to battle it out. And it's been a contest really of um, who can uh, uh, you know extend that, that that stint on the on the slick. So, and uh, as I'm just about to pass over to my good friend Jesse Lee, we have another drive through for Mo Plates in the number 33 Sunny Start Racing Blue. McLaren, um, obviously exceeding track limits, uh, as I don't see any stewarding reports coming in. So um, I will introduce you to Jess, uh, Jesse Lee, sorry, uh, who's come inside to the booth and come to join us for this this last grueling 45 minutes of this uh, what's been a fantastic 12 hours so far. Yeah, it's been action packed, hasn't it? As well, we'll be live with you through the end of tonight's race. The rain has come and gone. It's left a very wet track now, gone damp. And with the sun no longer being an issue, it will take this track a little bit longer to dry out. The rain was somewhat brief. It lasted about 20 to 30 minutes. It's come and gone now. But because it saturated the racetrack, we now are in a situation where those that are brave enough to go back on the Pirelli slick tires first may gain a little bit of an advantage. And that is huge for some of these battles that have yet to be resolved. But right you are, Les, these drive throughs all of these that we've seen are for track limits. None of these are steward assigned. It's very rare now with the way the stewarding book and the rules are written to receive a drive through penalty. The most common penalty you see these days are 10 and 20 seconds for take out accidents like that. So it would have to be absolutely heinous to receive a drive through for that, especially this late into the race. So. It's not always safe to assume that, but in this case, it's pretty much a dead ringer. Paul Ricard also likes to play with you. And again, ACC has that weird thing where the track limits move when the racetrack's wet as well. It certainly does, and unfortunately, I've been culprit of, uh, of that of that very thing. And um, when the wet weather arrives, it all, it just seems to feel like the the track becomes a lot narrower and. Uh, you can easily get a drive through within a very very quick succession but um we now see the uh, the 190 of uh, uh, phil walker at the wheel um in the in that ferrari um they've got a bit of a gap to um to carlos galatiad in the uh the rebound race in mercedes but um closely following now you know, we've got neil pimlot in the 46 dropping the hammer racing uh closing that gap after gaining that position from the drive through the unfortunate drive through of uh, of davy hill um but yeah, it's uh, it's certainly the rain at this track. It does uh, seem to breed drive-throughs, and we know why. Uh, it's it's harder to drive in the rain. We all know that. Um, it uh, takes a lot of uh, uh, time uh, and practice to, to really sort of nail fast times in the wet weather. But um, with this track in particular, though, it does seem that the ACC has its own its own idea of track limits at times and um, yeah and uh, it, you see a lot of drivers unfortunately uh, being, being victims of that. Well folks I want to play a little bit of a game with you but before we get to that Mike Jones in chat said are you winning son well technically yes uh, the Bentley out in front is getting that done so Martin Lawrence for the RCI esports team getting it done out there today uh, Tim Peck broadcaster here at RCI watching today over on twitch ask if i was going to be back in the booth tonight well the answer to that question is now a resounding yes hello tim peck hope you're well this evening on saturday rain's come and gone and i got a i got a little bit of a trivia question for you les stevenson let's see how you answer this what is the hardest 
part of this race or the hardest part of this pack of cars to be in? Is it harder to be near the back, in the middle? What's, who's got the hardest job in this race right now? No wrong answers, but I have an answer of my own. But what do you think? I, I would say it has to be the guys at the front. That's the hardest. Um, simply because, you know, you, you've just run just over 11 hours of, uh, of racing. You, you've gained an awful lot. Uh, there's going to be a lot of teams out there, a lot of drivers on, on three track limit warnings. So one more and they're going to get that drive through and you know what they don't want to be doing is making that small mistake to gain a drive through or, or make a mistake and maybe battling out for position where they then accidentally get a you know a, a penalty where you know all this work can be can be written off with just one small error but uh, i would say in answer to your question it's got to be the guys at the front Leonard into the pit lane for nearly on pace. That Porsche has looked absolutely immaculate here today, continuing their championship campaign. But right you are, that was going to say the hardest job in this entire field right now, though it may not seem it, is the drive of Martin Lawrence. The Czech driver has the hardest job. Why is that? He's got a lap or two in front of the field. He is not in any danger. He can take his time. He doesn't have to extend track limits. He can run several seconds a lap slower than everybody else. And you're asking yourself, Jesse, why is that hard? Because he has only one thing he can do that could win in this race. Everything else he could do could ruin this in the final 38 minutes. And that's as simple as it is. It's harder at the front because the less you can do about it, and if he makes a mistake, he loses a lap. He makes another mistake, he loses more laps. Crashes the car, you're in pit lane, you lost a couple of laps around this point. The hardest job at the end of one of these things is to close out the race. The nerves start jangling a little bit, maybe take your eye off the ball, then you're in trouble very quickly. You certainly are, and um, I couldn't have put it any better than that, Jesse. I mean, we see the number, we see quite a few cars going down pit lane, I should just, I think, uh, oh, of course, the tracks now have changed to greasy, so they're all going to be going on their sick tyres. Of course, with the rain arriving, it has meant that the teams um, with their limited tyre sets have uh, maybe gained a little bit of an advantage, and I'm assuming a lot of teams are thinking, do you know what, we've got just over 35 minutes left of this race, let's stick the slicks on and let's get some quick times in and hopefully undercut some of these other competitors that they're, they're battling out against. And, um, but yeah, well, I just see, you know, once you see one car, you quite often see a pack follow down, don't you, Jesse? And, you know, it's going to be interesting now just to see who can handle those slicks in these greasy conditions and, and gain time out of it. But, um, you know, with these with these lower temperatures as well, you know, 10 kilometer wind, I think that's the highest speed wind we've seen so far today. And, um, you know, with, with these conditions and the temperatures, I, I, you, you know, you've already alluded to it, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to dry out. But, um, some people already thinking it's time to, to change on slicks. Yeah, I don't really disagree with that statement. It did take quite a little bit of time to get back to this point where we're not dry necessarily. The track's greasy. It's got a layer of dirt, debris, and grime over top of the surface. The rubber is not being put into the racetrack, which is not conducive to the grip of the race cars. But this is right about the time where you would genuinely consider getting off the wet weather tire and putting back on the Pirelli P0 dry racing tires or racing slicks in this case. Mike Jones trying to start a train in chat, trying to get people to sign up for a race after this. I know a lot of drivers that do that. They're not really phased by this endurance racing. They'll go out here, they'll run four or five stints, maybe some more if you're a two car team. And then they'll turn around and go, oh, yeah, okay, well, what's on LFM? What's on this? Uh, what's the next race? Just for the love of racing. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. I get tired a little bit too easy. I need a break. I would call them nutcases, Jason, Jesse. But, um, Who's I Jason? I, I, I didn't say Jason. I said JC. Whatever you say, Lee. <laughs> and I got it wrong, okay? You caught me out. I made a mistake. Uh, no, I will, it's, uh, it's JC. Okay, from now on, it's JC. J JC Lee. So uh, yeah, oh, I thought you were calling me JC. I was like, I am no, I am not holier than thou. That. That's certainly the case. More cars coming into the pit lane, including your leader in the silver class. They'll pit out of a top three overall position. You know, it's a little bit of a stretch, but 
if they were to win this race outright, they would only be the second team in World Tour history to do that from the Silver Class. We saw that a season or two ago where a silver team in a rain race, a wet weather race, ended up stinking up the show and winning overall. They were absolutely elated to do so. And it was one of those rare moments of victory. And it's doubly sweet if you can pull that off. Uh, Harry Conway in chat said that Martin could disconnect and still win this race. That's actually kind of true. They would lose a lap or two, but they've got that in the bank to the next car in line. But even still, you don't want to make a habit out of making mistakes. And uh, right now, more than anything, with the lead and a massive one at that, just worry about things a little bit too much because you have time. You're afforded time. You're not in a battle. You don't have to immediately focus and your mind starts to wonder about, oh, well, are the tires giving up grip? Is this the right strategy? Have we done the fuel correctly? Am I losing, you know, a little bit of uh, energy here late in the race? Your mind definitely goes off. But uh, this has been a heck of a battle. I suspect we'll see this all season long. This is just round two of the World Tour 2024. The nearly on pace RCI battle at the front of the field, I mean. Yeah, it's been it's been quite quite a, a commanding uh, race so far, really, by Martin Lawrence and his team of the RCI Esports Bentley. But um, you know, like you said, to get this far, to mess it up now would be be crazy. I mean, obviously, Harry Conway is saying about he could disconnect and and still win this race. I mean, he's not wrong, uh, but I think to disconnect this late in the race, I think would uh, would maybe be a bit of an ask, but. Uh, but yeah, either way, it's been it's been quite a display uh, by the RCI Esports Bentley in, in the number seven six nine, and you know you got to you got to hand it to them. They've really put on a performance to, that's worthy of the win. Um, bit of a bit of an unfortunate uh, situation with the seven nine seven, of course, but um, that could have been a, a battle to the oh. end, maybe. But um, but uh, go, oh. on, go on, tell me, tell me. I have just been informed, I do apologize, I've just been informed by the Dutch Stig over on our Twitch channel that the leader in the silver class has had the very thing we were just talking about happen to them, the unthinkable. They have had a disconnect, a crash, upon trying the driver swap in pit lane as Kellen, uh, Kellen tried to hand over that leading race car in silver there was a crash. They've had to rejoin. They have lost the lead at this point in the silver class. And that is absolutely devastating. The number two Aston now leads in there. Brandon's apparently still in the car or back in the car and out there on the racetrack. But as of now, they have lost the lead. That is, that's devastating. I mean, that's sickening, isn't it? I mean, it's happened to us, uh, you know, with the drop of the hammer. Uh, you know, when we uh, were racing at Monza, we were we were out of the lead. We had 37 minutes left to go of a 24-hour race, and we got disconnected. And um, yeah, it's just it's just sickening, and all that hard work that's just been lost. Uh, I mean, all's not lost, of course, still in P2, but um, yeah, that's really really unfortunate. Uh, as uh, as Ash has already alluded to, yeah, disaster disaster strikes but um but yeah you know you just got to pick up the pieces and just get on with it and there's nothing you can do about it you can't turn back the clock and unfortunately these things just happen i mean we've seen a we've already seen a couple of teams disconnect today um you know just for whatever reason whatever that may be and it's just unfortunate but uh but yeah it is uh it's just bad luck if that's what it is but um we've got uh we now see uh 797 john daly still in the car um a bit under the weather today but uh battling out to the end uh, just over 31 minutes to go uh, in P9 so uh, and I'm hearing in my ears has just lost P8 to, to come through so uh, a rebound racing in the 777 Mercedes the Daily down to ninth place Nico Kumpu up into seventh in the 777 well, let's talk about the new leader in the silver class we've talked with them and about them a little bit today ACC Vlanderen and behind the wheel, Cliff, Bolke, and they cannot believe their luck. It's not over and done with, though. If uh, Glennon can do something about this, if Brandon can continue to wheel that race car around, I, I suspect they might have a shot. I saw the...
timing and scoring update, yes, to about 10 seconds. It's 9.5 now. This isn't over for the Dutch Sim Racing team in the 475. They had such a massive lead. They may still overcome this. Nine and a half seconds the gap for the lead in silver with 30 minutes to go on a dry racetrack. Most people have made or are contemplating making their final stop of the day for dry tires again. We know right now, as it were, that we will not have any more rain here tonight. We will be dry for the finish once the sort of uh, the greasy part uh, works its way out. It's still not gone. Any sort of uh, rubbered in phase of the racetrack. It's taking its sweet time here in the darkness. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll be surprised if I, we even see it go past uh, fast track conditions. I think we're going to see the race finish probably in fast track conditions, maybe even staying greasy. I mean, it's uh, it's quite it's quite cool considering, you know, the weather we had earlier today. Uh, the wind's still quite high, so that's a that's a bonus really for the track drying. But um, yeah, I think we're probably going to end up seeing it in fast track conditions. But we did uh, we did just see uh, what seems to be a battle going on for for what looks like P5 in in the silver class between the 46 and the 190 uh, of Phil Walker and to, uh, Tom Watts. Um, for those that don't know, Tom Watts, um, part of the Drop and Hammer Racing team, is uh, his nickname is Track Limits Tom. So I do hope he doesn't live up to that name today where we're currently on three track warnings. So uh, let's hope he can bring it home without living up to that name. Maybe we can uh, get, get him to pass the, uh, pass the banner on. Man, you'd think Les Stevenson has a bingo card of people he's trying to offend today, but Walker in the number 190, I believe that is the, G, the DGSR Team 190 car. And they are right back to them. Remember, Watts was able to take that position away. P5, there was a drive through penalty for the 190. And this is the state of the battle now for that fifth place position. By the way, Clinton in the Dutch Sim Racing team for 75 Aston. They are continuing to call that back. Brandon's got a second back in the past two minutes. That fight is not over. In fact, just called an additional half a second in that last sector that dutch sim racing team car is coming back to the front for silver yeah i think the red flag is in front of the uh no not the red flag that'd be the that'd be the wrong phrase but uh they're seeing red you say since that disconnect they're gonna be they're gonna be all uh yeah red mist as i've been putting my ear they're gonna be uh seeing that red mist and really sort of fired up to to get that that position back but um you know as we've seen in the chat uh, on the youtube chat uh, we've got some fans of the DSR team. Uh, you know, they're only saying that obviously the, the fight is uh, for the winning class, but the podium overalls is now uh, probably left their their, uh, their reach. But you know, they're, uh, they they can do everything they can, can't they? Well, now now the red mist has descended. You know, they, they you may even find they they even start setting times that you know they never could even dreamt of before because they were probably just cruising really, Jesse, to the finish. The official Dutch Sim Racing Team YouTube chat or YouTube channel is coming to say, we can only try to gain and fight for the winning class, but podium for us is gone overall. That, uh, of course, doesn't pay them extra points. It would have been nice, of course, a cherry on top, if you will, but the overall win will more than suffice for the happiness of the team, I would imagine. Harry Conway has said that he knows another track limits, Tom and reckons that's a coincidence. Well, every other person here that does uh, work at RCI is named Tom, as it turns out. You might be Tom Stevenson, uh, for all I know, but uh, it was for a time when he was named Tom. Apparently, uh, Track Limits runs runs with the name. If you name Tom, you're more likely to get uh, DTs. Who knew? I mean, I'm not a massive fan of my name, but I'm quite glad it's not Tom then. Really? In that case. Yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I do curse my parents for for naming me this. I mean, um, you know, it is what it is. I've got to take it now. I? I've had it for this long. I can't change it now. But uh, anyway, I don't think it would be Tom as that choice. Um, probably something well, like Carlos, to be honest. I think I, think I look like a Carlos, Jesse. <laughs> I'm just mad at my parents because they gave me a name with half hours. Back to you, Les. <laughs> uh, yeah, OK. No worries, JC. Uh, anyway, so as we can see, we've got 25 minutes left to go. As I said, we're still in greasy condition, so it doesn't look like it's going to get 
we're gonna, I don't think we're going to be seeing lightning times being set anyway, that's for sure. Um, I think the fastest lap that's currently with Martin Lawrence's team of the 769 Bentley RCI Esports team, I think that's probably going to stay with them. I can't see this track ever evolving that much to be able, for anyone able to get a faster lap time in. So it looks like they'll be getting some extra points today for that as well. You know, just to cap off what has been so far, I don't want to put the curse on, but so far uh, a fantastic day for them. But um, but yeah, we've got, uh, like I said, we've got just under 25 minutes to go. I think most of the drivers now, if not all, have pitted for the very last time. So we're now going to just see uh, them all battling out now for, to the end. We've got quite a few little close battles. I mean, we did mention about the, uh, the 475 having that unfortunate uh, d disconnect. Um, but, you know, they are clawing back. I mean, they're under seven seconds now. Under seven seconds to the number two Aston Martin. But um, let's see how that, that gets on. But uh, we've, like I said, 24 minutes to go, though. You know, seven seconds isn't all that much. But uh, And in these conditions, as we just see it go to fast, um, as we now have a fast track, anything's possible. But, um, yeah, it's quite, like I said, it's quite a few uh, battles on track. We've got the uh, the 190 still battling out with the 46. Dropped back a little bit. But, um, but yeah, there's still plenty going on. And uh, I can see this being you know, a, a close a close race all the way to the finish certainly could be and just keeping up with the dutch sim racing team brandon's trying his best and the chief and the team chief is managing the vc and that is a driver that's hungry brandon kind to get back into the lead it's 6.7 seconds call it 6.8 i'll be generous there and that is the difference now the question will become now according to my math i reckon the dutch sim racing team gets there to the number two ACC car. But what will happen when they get there? Will it be a defensive drive from the two? Will they have something defensive or to defend? Will the 475 drive right by? Well, only time will tell. Six and a half seconds to gap through that particular timing being 23 minutes left to go, a significant portion of time. Track has gone fast as Les has stated. What does that do? Well, it adds grip to the racetrack. It also makes the driver a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more confident, but even more important, it stops graining the tires as much, uh, leaning on the sidewalls coming through some of these corners. It's a little bit more grip, which means that you're not scrubbing it off like a cheese grater on the asphalt. That makes the tires happy. That in turn makes the driver happy and uh, calms the minds here in the final 22 and a half minutes. Yeah, and of course, uh, as we say, uh, as I say, sorry, that it probably wasn't going to get any better than fast track. I uh, have to eat my words as it now changes to optimum, Jesse. So we're now going to see some quicker times going down. I don't know if the track's going to evolve enough to maybe get a quicker lap time out with what the uh, 769 has been able to do today. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, yeah, this, like I said, this is where tyres are now going to start being a bit happier uh, with cooler conditions as well. Uh, the drivers are going to be enjoying a bit more, a bit more grip to their disposal. Uh, most of these drivers now have got fresh tyres. They have had to run a little bit in sort of damper conditions, so maybe the tyres won't be optimal, but certainly the track is. And um, yeah, we can see now uh, Wolf Matushka pilot in the 796 RCI Esports McLaren uh, in P3. A good day for them, I think. Uh, well, I think they're quite a way behind the, uh, the, the 899 Porsche, but uh, you know, a good day all all. And um, you know, we, we look down the grid and you can see quite a lot of names that we do see quite regularly in RCI. Uh, but uh, you know, you see some of these names quite often at the top. But uh, you know, you can see some of these names that I've I don't think I've seen an awful lot of. And to see them near the near the top is is great to see, Jesse. And it just shows, you know, with the BOP being applied, uh, kind of you know, given to us by by LFM. You know, we've got you know some great battles that have gone on, and it's you know we just we're going to be completing a 12-hour race, and there's still this many drivers still able to to battle it out. Yeah, you talk about Wolf Matushka and that 796 bunch. They've had a very quiet day in one way. That's good. In another way, it's not so much. I don't feel like the LFM BOP favors this car at this racetrack. They're by far and away the highest running McLaren in third to think that they could get a podium off of this. I heard some grumblings from some of the other McLaren teams saying that we are dead in the water at this particular racetrack. But to see one up on the podium, 
that is absolutely incredible and they've had a quiet day because of it they've not really raised anybody they're in the sort of the john dalton zone for the most part of it but that's kind of the strength of that team and wolf matushka just having nice solid quiet runs take home a boatload of points no pun intended with some of the other cars involved in today's race but it's just about getting through with it getting to a track that maybe benefits you a little bit better with the McLaren platform. Take what you can get, don't overstretch yourself, and see where the chips fall because this is going to be a good finish. It's going to keep them in World Tour Championship contention in that pro field. The same thing can be said about nearly on pace. The Porsche, I just think that with the negative 23 kilograms of ballast in that bit leak, as assigned by LFM's VRP, it obviously was a little bit favored in some ways here today. Porsche couldn't really do a whole lot with that in a straight line, but they gave it their all. They're going to take home uh, something uh, untoward happens. They're going to take home a solid P2, and that's going to be a handshake and job done for them as well at NOP. It certainly is, and um, yeah, great day really for, for those guys. And, you know, I just look back at the results from, from uh, the round one, uh, and I'm just looking uh, at, at the pro and the uh, silver class, and apart from you know the seven six nine, uh, of course, leading today, they they won the last time out. But as a and, and you know, like you said about the nearly on pace uh, Porsche and P two, you know, really you look down towards the silver, and there's guys there that you know all, all the top guys have finished in, in in the previous race, apart from the number thirty. The, uh, in fact, I've got that wrong. It's not even a number 30. It was the steady start race in number 33 that won the race last time out. So there's a lot of teams there that aren't even in the, in the top, you know, the top three of, of class. It's, it's just really thrown completely on its head, the championship. And it just goes to prove, you know, some drivers suit some tracks better than others. And, to, you know, conditions and, and, and maybe sometimes even the length of these races can really change things dramatically. But, uh, yeah. We're on for a, a great finish. What's been a great spectacle so far, you know, like I said, 12 hours for, for any team to be racing in is, is, is a brilliant event, you know, let alone a 24 hour, which we do, of course, have coming up uh, soon uh, within this championship. And, um, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been good. It's been really good, to be fair. And, and the sprinkling rain really has added that spice to uh, what was a great race anyway. DSRT in the YouTube chat has said sprint race is on 4.6 seconds. Brandon behind Volke for the lead in the silver class. And just touching back on NOP for a second, 769 RCI car, they can win as much as they want. As long as NOP finishes second right behind them, they're never going to get away. And all it would take in the finale, if it were to come to that, is one mistake by the 769. You know, he's going to win that championship. Why do I say it like that? I've seen him do it before. <laughs> well, the, the consistency is obviously key for them. And, uh, you know, I've said it in, earlier in the broadcast, you know, it's, I'm, that's something I pride myself on, is consistency. And if a team can be consistent and finish P2, you know, get on that podium every race, then that's a great haul of points towards the championship. And, you know, championships aren't always won just by winning races. You know, like you've already alluded to, they've managed to do it just by finishing P2. So, you know, it's that's that's what I love about the team events. You know, it's, um, it's all about working towards that that bigger goal. And if it means compromising and finishing P3 instead of instead of P1, just just to make it a safe bet, then why not? You know, if it means you're going to win the championship for it, then then that's the way you do it. But um, Anyway, we look back on track, as you've already alluded to, the 475 really closing that gap now with the Dutch Sim Racing team. They really have managed to close down to nearly four seconds. Uh, you know, if they can get it under four seconds with 16 minutes to go, that's, uh, that's going to be quite an incredible battle right the way to the end. While we have a minute before things hot up here for the finish, just want to thank all of you for being with us all day for part one and part two of round two of RCI's World Tour, the 12 hours of Paul Ricard here, live in sight and vision on Twitch and YouTube. For anyone who has hit the like button and the subscribe button on YouTube, we appreciate you. We're trying to increase our footprint and presence on Twitch as well, and you all have shown up for that. Shout out to Azzy4205, Zoo One Love as well, Oxygen6210, McDougal, 
has also followed the channel. The real Sparksky, not Callum K, Mr. Horizontal, Zerus, Tommy HKP. Next level is Jal Manso and the Dutch Stig, who just now followed us over on Twitch. That's huge for us over here as we try to get our subscription button at some point in the future. We certainly appreciate it. We hope that you've enjoyed our broadcast, but don't go away yet because uh, we're not quite done. We've got some hardware to hand out, and we're not sure what names to inscribe on the plaque. No, we don't. And uh, I just wondered, Jesse, if the Dutch Stig, if that's uh, one of my distant relatives, um, I, I, I'll put a shout there. You know, if they, if they do know of uh, any member of their family that know the fat Stig, then, um, yeah, get in contact. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's great to see that the following's <laughs> get, the following's getting bigger and bigger on Twitch and, you know, and, uh, and YouTube, to be fair. And like, like Jesse's already said, you know, thanks everyone that does like and, and, and just simply watch at times. You know, you, you, if you click that like button and the subscribe button, then brilliant stuff. We thank you for it. But, um, yeah, we uh, now see Jordan Daly uh, battling on P9. I mean, to think that these guys had all that trouble at the start uh, to go not only down to, to P last, as we say, but to also go a lap down and then to get all the way back up to, well, even at one point up to P6. Um, they've had a little bit more trouble since then, but uh, a few drive throughs and, and what have you. But uh, yeah, no, it's a great great to see that they've battled it out all the way to the end. And these these sort of points, Jesse, these are the ones that count. These are the ones, you know, you battle all the way to the end and you can really put these towards your championship. I know they're probably thinking right now, P9, you know, it's not a great deal of points, but it could mean win or lose a championship at the end of the season. It certainly could. Shout out Dark Pango following over on Twitch as well. I see you. Thank you so much for doing so. And for the Twitch group, or the Twitch group, the YouTube group as well. If you followed or found RCI Day, uh, once the video is up, leave a comment saying this is my first race. We love to read the comments. We don't always respond to the comments, but we see them. We've got a pretty stout contingent of folks that comment on the videos and add extra insight. And weirdly enough for me in broadcast, that helps me. I use that for the next round of the championships. Other things going on here at RCI. Of course, we've got a whole slate of racing for you in the next week. Starting off with Thursday, iRacing, continuing coverage of IMSA. IMSA goes to Belgium to race at Spa Francorchamps and the Friday champion continuation of the GT2 championship as well. More of that and a lot rather besides open signups now for the new Monday championship on ACC. It's Jaguar versus V12 Aston. And you can take your pick, pick a side. It's a team champ because you're racing on Team Jaguar, Team Aston. And it's also a solo champ as well. Still time to sign up for that. Sign-ups looking very interesting there as well. We do WRC racing as well. Different rallies throughout the year. All you have to do, racerci.com, join the Discord, get involved today. Heck, you could even be on the World Tour grid in one month's time for round number three if you like. Certainly could do. And, uh, you know, talk about the Monday Championship. That's uh, one that's close to my heart. Um, what team are you? I'm, oh, I'm Team Jack. Team Jack. Um, but, uh, yeah, be interesting. I, I know that the Aston Martin, the V12, a lot of people like that. You know, they love the screaming V12. Um, but uh, I've gone with the, I've gone with the Jag. Um, I've raced the Jag a few times, and you know, I've, you know, one of our partners, Go Setups, they've done, they've done a lot of setups for the the Jag. So I thought, you know, I'll go for the Jag. There's some setups available. I'll use them. I, I quite like the Go Setup. So let's see what I can do in that. But uh, oh, it'll be interesting. It's a good, good bit of fun. I always love the Monday Jam. It's the one night of the week, Jesse, that, that I'm allowed to to race, uh, guaranteed to race, we say. Um, uh, of the week, so it's my time to hopefully shine, and uh, and maybe the Jag can show me a, a thing or two in, in lesson on the how to drive, uh, you know, a decent a decent race car. Of course, Les Stevenson, an incredibly busy man with work, uh, a park aficionado as well. He's seen enough of them in his day, and uh, that does take it out of you, uh, Kellen. Now, uh, Kellen, sorry, uh, catching up to Bulkate for the lead. 1.5 seconds, the gap. It's been called by the DSRT Sim Group in chat, but it was on 
for about six or eight minutes. I think he's going to get there with time to spare. And that will return us back to the question. A spoiler alert from the ACC Flanderen team. They're about to have a battle for the lead. Now, the question is, though, what happens when the 475 catches the two here? Is it a defensive drive from Bolke, or do they just try and not lose additional time there? No reason not to race, in my opinion, Les. They're the only two racing for the lead. Even if there were a calamity here, there are many, many seconds and perhaps laps ahead. It wouldn't matter anyway. Give it a go. Yeah, no, I think they're at least a lap, if not two, ahead of uh, their next competitors, uh, the, uh, the two from four Lamborghini. But um, they've got a they've got a race for it. You can't, you can't just give them. You can't give it up now, right? Yeah, you've got all this way. You can't just give them the win. And, but you, you've got to be honest, you know, if I was in their shoes right now, I would literally be, you know, I'd be seeing a, a brown flag moment. You know, it'll be, it'll be, <laughs> I'll be literally panicking, thinking, oh my God. I, all I want to do is just stay in front of that Aston. We've got all this way. We've got, we've got the wind within our grasp. We've just, just, we've just got, what's this, what, uh, quick maps, uh, about sort of five, maybe, yeah, about five laps remaining, uh, maybe a little bit less. Um, but, you know, if they could just hold on for another five laps, for argument's sake, and, uh, you know, to get the win now, that would just be an excellent, excellent day. And let's remember, the number two Aston, they they started from pit lane in this race. So to get a win in their class at the end of 12 hours, like starting from pit lane, would be a, an incredible achievement. Yeah, it really would be. I agree. They have to race for it. This is the longest five laps if you're Cliff Bolke because you know that car is quick. They've led most of the race. They wouldn't be behind you if it wasn't for a mistake. And now it just becomes, now look at this. This is the gamesmanship. This is exactly what I was going to touch on. You see the spoiler alert on the spoiler. Very humorous indeed. But now using the car's draft weight as a weapon here trying to break the toe down the Mistral straight to keep that car from closing in that extra little bit, not trying to help your competitors. And I think that has answered our question on how hard does the leader fight for this, knowing that the other car is considerably quicker. The answer is still, we have to go for it. We're all in agreement that they should race and they will do. Cliff Balke for ACC Landerin leading the race in silver and the Dutch sim racing team back to P2 and closing in more than 10 seconds was the gap post penalty and they have closed that gap right up less than a second now a few laps left to go in the race can Wendelin hold on can the two team hold on I don't know I think it might be one or two laps too many I think you might be right there Jesse I I, I just hope for a, you know a clean respectable fight to the end but uh, it looks inevitable that the force of the five will take that position but let's see what happens as we see uh, Richard Phillips actually getting really close I know so I tell you, like Richard Phillips is in front of the BMW there uh, of, Ooh, uh, oh, oh okay yeah 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 for Davy Hill managed to get the move then done I Phillips had a little bit of a a little bit of a, a wander over the edge of the track there maybe just trying to pull him off it might still be wet on the edge of course um, I mean, it says on to him, it's, it's more than likely dry out there, but you never know. There's a lot of marbles as well, you know, we've had nearly 12 hours of racing, so there's going to be a lot of marbles out there, might have just dragged them out, but yeah, got the move done, and another position uh, done there with, uh, with Davey Hill, but, um, but yeah, going back to that, that fight up front in the silver class, uh, it's, yeah, they're going to be doing all they can to break that toe without, you know, being disrespectful, and you can see now that Cliff is really trying to, to keep in front. And of course, they're in the same machinery. So going down the straight, I'll unless you you're in what, the tow, you're going to be... Go on, Jesse. He hasn't driven by him, has he? He got there. He's about the... He's a little closer than he was, yes, but he hasn't just Ooh. driven by him. And he's going to go wide here. He clearly has a little bit of a braking advantage, or maybe he couldn't spot his braking marker. And that cost him precious little time. They're as close as they've ever been here. Balke on Clinton, and this is the fight for the win with less than six minutes to go. The Silver Class has certainly 
been an interesting one to watch today. Brandon has it all to do. They're on full sprint mode, and Bolke trying to drive ever so slightly defensive. Needs a good run out of the final corner here. It looked like it was pretty good for Clinton, but a little bit better, a little less bound up on turn exit for Bolke, and that's going to be all she wrote down the pit straight. That's another couple of corners now that Brandon for DSRT is going to have to stay behind this car. And once again, another lap ticked off the books. So he is, and but, you know, maybe there's a bit of tactics going on here. Let's keep behind them. Let's keep behind them right up to that, that sort of down to the, uh, the missile straight, and then they get the, the move done in the slipstream. You don't particularly want to be getting ahead just now, because then there'll be a disadvantage with the with the draft. But um, but yeah, they it, they certainly seem like they're definitely better under the brakes. Um, maybe going a little bit high into some of the corners, but you know you can't blame them. They're, they're literally putting it all on the on the line to get this race win and, and fair play to them and uh, as we see them now getting onto this Mr. Straight, two Astons, you know, same machinery, same power, may have a little bit of a different aerodynamic setup but uh, you now see the gap just closing and closing, you just, all you can imagine in your mind is the Jaws music, you know, just going yeah. on, the, the, yep. the, here he comes, here he comes, here you go. They're going to the, into t turn eight, no, he decides to back out of it, just not close enough. You, oh, you've got Cliff's to there. It. Certainly, certainly was. Um, and Cliff there really sort of, you know, you've got to give it to Cliff, you know, really doing well to keep him in front. Uh, you know, and I do wonder as well with the, uh, the technical issue they had, whether that's um, having implications on uh, on tyres as well, because you know, their tyres will probably be reset. And whether Cliff's on older tyres, we don't know. They might have had to use an old set coming back onto the dry track. But, um, but yeah, as we see them now going into what is probably the second to last lap, I would have thought, maybe maybe one more, but uh, oh, we're getting extremely close to the last corner of the start finish straight, Jesse. They got close there a lap or so ago, a couple of twitches, but no movement there. And you may be wondering, what is stopping Brandon Clinton here from making this pass? He caught him, he was like lightning fast. Why has he not made the pass? Well, there's an old saying in motorsport, Catching them is one thing, passing them is quite another. It doesn't mean Brandon any good to go up here and force a hasty maneuver and get into contact with the number two car because that could draw the ire of a penalty report and you don't want the race settled by that. You want to settle it like race car drivers on the track. What does that mean? You need to make a clean move. Brandon's easiest avenue is if Bulkett would just make a big enough mistake, but that hasn't happened yet, and this has led to the stalemate. Less than three minutes of the race to go. The leader is down into turn three and four. They're somewhat behind this group right here, so these cars will effectively have an additional lap. They won't, but you catch my drift that they will be racing. There'll be some of the last cars to cross the line. Side by side this time. Defensive line by Bolke. Down the inside on the Mistral straight. Will he have the run in the grip? Yes, he will. Has to fall back in line, does Gogan. And that was all she wrote again because now, unless uh, Bolke makes a mistake, I don't think the DSRT car is going to be able to make their way around. They're looking around the outside. Not usually a move you see here. Looking up the inside, definitely better on the brakes there is the Dutch Sim Racing car. But Balke holds. Certainly does not doing a fantastic job. I mean, to take the inside line there, it's always a bit of a risk with the, the DSRT uh, car on the outside. And, you know, you've got to hand it to them. You know, they're, they're, they're blatantly on the older tyres. Or, or, you know, it certainly seems like the, the 475 um, definitely has a bit of a disadvantage but um but yeah it's it certainly seems that way and let's let's see what happens so, sorry the 475 on fresh tires or so but uh but yeah it's uh it's, cliff's doing a great job here for, for acc brandon uh to keep it in the lead but yeah i think we're looking at uh this i think this potentially could even be the last lap jesse uh no yeah. i tell like there'll be one more there will be one more as the leader now crosses the line to start the last lap Last lap for Martin Lawrence and the RCI Esports team looking to go back to back. Very few teams have been able to say they've done that in the World Tour. That is what we're facing here today. Nearly on pace though, not 
allowing them to get away. It's still a very close championship battle. I imagine between those teams and even perhaps the 796, that's going to come down to the wire at the end of this championship season. But right now, all eyes on Clinton and Bulky racing for the win in the silver class. They will have one additional lap. They're not coming to get the checkered flag here. They will be shown the one lap to go signal, but there is still a race to be decided. Flanderen has found themselves in the lead. The Dutch Sim Racing team has had one mistake and it's really cost them the lead here late, but they've driven themselves back in a position with better tires, you would have to say, but the defensive driving, the precision of Bulke off some of these corners has let the 475 wanting just a little bit. The pressure mounting for Brandon Clinton now. They know they have to make this pass on this coming lap. They certainly do. One more lap to go, Jesse. We've got a couple of corners, then one more lap to go. And the number two, you know, Bolke there, really, all he's got to do is exactly what he's already done. Just keep it clean, keep it tidy. I mean, I'd be love to be a fly on the wall right now in the, in the team, you know, within the team, you know, to see what's being said, you know, whether they're just silent, letting him get on with it, or whether they're really geeing him on and, and getting him to the, to the finish line. And, uh, you know, he, you've got to hand it to him, like I've already said, you know, to, to get it, this far in the race and to, to have this gap so close to the final final lap this is going to be great to see checkered flag is out martin lawrence brings the rci esports 769 to a brilliant victory here today they didn't lead flag to flag but they built a gap continuously throughout the race and they're going to celebrate in the infield care center Leonard in the 899 nearly on pace machine will come across the line at some point. Wolf Matushka looking like you're likely third. All eyes though, back on the silver battle because the DSRT car looking to make the move. The fireworks ablaze in the night sky, but that is not the focus of these two drivers. Defensive again into the corner or on the straight in this case is bulky the night threw me for a loop there i thought they were closer to the turn than they actually were defensive line again he's holding it though is brandon clinton they got really close there switch back maneuver down to the inside couldn't quite get in there in turn nine. Oh, that was so close jesse and i'm just amazed that they didn't actually make any contact as they now go around that fast right hander down in turn 10 and uh can they keep it in front for this, line, this slower section of the track? They've got lap, lap traffic, traffic in front of them as well. They could get involved. I hope these guys just uh, realize what's going on and maybe get out of the way of what could potentially be uh, a, you know, a win for, for one of these two teams. But as they now come around the final corners, we just hope there's just no contact. It is a nice, clean, respectful finish, which it looks like it's going to be. And well done to the, to the number two car of Cliff Buckle. Uh, sorry, not Buckle, Bolker, uh, the ACC Vlanderen team. What a finish. Cliff Balke wins it for ACC Vlanderen in a crazy finish to this already drama-filled race. Second place to the Dutch Sim Racing team here today. And my, 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 I got to say, all credit to Brandon Clinton. They just didn't want to risk contact there. They had a couple of opportunities to shove the nose in, but the respect for their fellow competitor, in my opinion, kept them from doing just that. Results on your screen now, pending any post-race penalties, of course. RCI Esports wins the second on a trot. Don't say it's rigged. It's not rigged. Uh, Maybe rigged. Uh, the 769 wins, I just, of course, uh, nearly on pace in that Porsche coming home in P2, a lap or so off the ultimate pace. Wolf Matushka brings the second RCI Esports car home in third place, a double podium for the home team. Willemont takes the 316 in fourth place. Dubiel brings the Forza Italia PL car home in fifth in what was an adventurous first part of the race for them. Cliff Balke wins it for the number two Aston team and then Brandon Clinton home in the 475. Alcer in the Lamborghini. The 234 brings it home in third for their efforts that was a heck of a race and that kept us sort of baited breath right till the last uh, shout out to the swiss rc team as well third in the silver class les sigh relief deep breath 
<sighs> what a race. Yeah, massive sight. Uh, what a what a finish to the race as well. I mean, like, like we've already said, you know, 12 hours and we still have that type of finish. It's just, yeah, it was just a really, really good end to what was a what was a great race. And, you know, we we had a lot go on today. We had a lot go on today. People had their troubles. The weather was there. You know, it, it, it changed. You know, we had rain for a couple of sessions. And, yeah, it was just, it was, it had everything today, didn't it, Jesse? I mean, we had, we had such close battles. We had people, unfortunately, have technical difficulties, you know, but it just goes to prove, you know, you keep battling on, you can still get a great result. And it, it means everything in a championship. It really does. I don't think anything really happened to the championship fights here today. It very nearly, I mean, just ever so slightly widened in the pro field. In the silver field, you documented that this race uh, has completely reset convention there. All the teams that did well for round number one perhaps were on the back foot here tonight. So anybody's guess is good in that situation right there. Got a couple of interviews we're going to do, but next round of the RCI World Tour 2024, we're going to America, circuit of the Americas there for what I believe to be an eight-hour endurance race in the Lone Star State. But for now, let's go ahead and Hello. pull some folks in for an interview. And uh, we're talking to the 767 team, and they wouldn't let Speed come in and do an interview earlier, but now that the race is over, you're both here. Leon and Speed, welcome in. Yeah. Hello. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Absolute, <laughs> absolute pleasure. Tell us about your race, Oh, it was a, certainly an experience. <laughs> um, we, we had a decent start, I think got up to 14th or 13th, I can't remember. Uh, then we handed over to Gershti and he had a, he had a good stint actually. Um, he um, kept it level, no incidents, dropped down a bit, but that's all we wanted. And then uh, it unraveled from there, had issues with the tyres, and then we had a disconnect. And uh, yeah, we were, we were stone dead last. For a bit, uh, got over. We overtook uh, to get not last, and then we binned. So we were the last and I was basically flat out every single lap, which was tiring. And uh, I think in the end, the gap was like 4.5. Uh, yeah, being not it last. was something like that. So yeah, a lot of sportsmanship in both the YouTube and the Twitch chats as well. We're talking with the SOS team the 767 it was a rough start i think a lot of folks had that issue today where they were put sort of on the back burner the back foot very early on and it was a recovery drive the more important thing for me is did you enjoy your run back through the field oh absolutely honestly i think it's the most fun i've ever had driving this car um because it basically just wasn't stopping but like, the good thing with our disconnect is it reset our tires so we didn't have to worry about saving them um so yeah, literally every every lap I was I was pushing, trying to beat my personal best every lap and uh, just just be up there. And uh, it was it was painful at the start because we were in lap car hell, but um, towards the end I was in fresh air from pretty much Farmston, so it's very nice. Talking with Leon Randall and Gersty Speed here. Gersty, by the way, we appreciate you effectively live uh, live twitching us, letting us know about what's going on during the race today that was absolutely brilliant we absolutely welcome that i'm going to turn you over to my partner les stevenson well chaps you know congratulations on what's been a quite a grueling race by sounds things i mean what i would say is it's it's great to hear that even though you had your troubles and you know, your challenges you, you stuck it out to the end and yeah okay you had a little bit of an advantage towards the end with it with your tires but you know you just battled it out all the way to the end and you know congratulations on what you've just described as you know one of your most exciting uh, races you've had but um what i would ask is uh before i mean when, when about when is it you got your disconnect when, when about some, during the race Ooh, it yeah. would have been michael's first stint so that yeah probably a Oh, probably just after the halfway from oh, no later a bit after a bit i think after we had like half, four and a half i think we had like four and a half hours uh left of the race and then we had the disconnect yeah so it was show. quite yeah quite unfortunate and, you know to get that far in a lot i know a lot of teams may have uh, thrown the towel in and and just said enough's nah. enough and, and gone for the bit it's great to hear you guys just carried it on and and bowed it out all the way to the end and you know it, did you did you end up having any rain at all in in split two? No, no, no absolutely not. It was, it was we very were, nice. We were calling for, for we were calling for the sprinklers because Paul Ricard has um, 
<laughs> okay, yeah, well, as you probably already aware, you know, it was, it was a little bit different in Split 1. Uh, they did yeah. have a little sprinkle of rain, but, uh, it, well, on two occasions, but uh, which obviously threw a lot of things into the mix. But, um, yeah, no, great race cut today, guys, and I'm glad you enjoyed yourselves, and thanks for taking part and, and sticking out to the end. And, and uh, you know, good luck for the, for the next few rounds. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Anybody you want to shout out before you go? Um, probably Michael for finding his old graphics card, putting it back in and being able to drive, so I didn't exceed my driver's stint time. Um, Let's go. Talking about yeah. Michael Gavani, I believe. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Very nice. Uh, okay, Steve, you? Yeah, no, shout out to the guys. Uh, also Luke, who, who was there. Well, emotional support for a lot of the races. Uh, and actually, he made that up. Out. Yeah, he made our setup and he was emotional support for at least half of the race and <laughs> he will actually race next next time Kota I think Luke will be in the car with us. Yeah. They all go to I, plan. I probably won't, but uh, we will see. <laughs> and yeah. Always um, I mean we are here for the for the for the whole race so we are using it, so let's go get back out even with all the trouble. Yeah yeah. That's Absolutely in spirit, uh, ladies, and gentlemen, and others. Uh, SOS, the number six, or excuse me, seven sixty-seven. I'm dyslexic. Leave me alone. Congratulations. Thanks for coming and talking to us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, see you around. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll definitely see you in the next one. Well, from the seven sixty-seven to the winning team again, Martin Lawrence joins us after dominating much of the day today. Martin, what do you got to say about a performance like that? I'm speechless and I'm flawless. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what happened. It was just it was just too quick. We were just like anything we did. Basically, it was a joy to drive. We agreed all on that. Uh, and yeah, well, seems the Bentley was a little bit underbogged, I would say. <laughs> because uh, the middle sector dominance was just, was just out of this universe. The pull of the car was just amazing. And Chris set it up uh, uh, for me perfectly. I was just enjoying it uh, the whole double stint I was enjoying, which I don't think too many people can say. <laughs> because I saw the struggle uh, with the tires for everyone and we had like none. We were just sailing. And even on the wet we were sailing, so yeah, well, like, top notch, I don't even, I don't know. I just, yeah, it was too good. <laughs> well, maybe you, guys, maybe you guys were too good. I mean, you drove the car, you, you took what it was giving you, and you, early on, the race complexion obviously looked a lot different, but you took control of it, you ended up getting several laps. How did you stay out of trouble today? Well, I don't know. Uh, we were just like there was not not too much like happening in terms of any incidents or backmarkers, uh, the, the blue flag, uh, the cars, weren't uh, any issues. Everyone was polite. Really, like it was it was it was a very polite race after a like decent amount of time. On Nürburgring was fine, but uh, as I'm driving more series, well, I'm not used to. <laughs> I'm not used to people being polite, really. Um, so, yeah, well, that was uh, there wasn't uh, too many incidents happening, so we just sailed away. Shame that uh, the sister car was just unlucky as well. It's just yeah. Uh, Tijni and uh, Jordan were really unlucky with that. Uh, with that lag issues from the disconnect. So yeah, that, that, that was a shame because uh, especially Jordan was pushing extremely well. You've seen yeah, that. Led the uh, race the at one point did Jordan Daly before that happened. Martin, I'm gonna turn you over to my partner, Les Stevenson. Well, Martin, congratulations on what was a fantastic win. I, mean, I, mean, I know you're saying uh, it was uh, a breeze really, but uh, you know, for 12 hours, I mean, I've just, it's interesting you say about the instances and the lack of. I've just been looking back through the uh, the incident reports uh, with the, uh, the stewards and 
yeah, you're right. I mean, I did know there was, I did think, sorry, there was a uh, very little amount of instance uh, today, but I've just looked back through and there's actually only 11 lines of, of instance reported. So yeah, you're quite right. You know, it was a very low instant race. And um, I must say, you say about, you know, it was a dream to drive. Uh, what is it in particular? You know, is there a particular se se sector of the track that you felt was it particularly good or did you just find the whole circuit was just, it was just a dream to drive? Yeah, the whole circuit was uh, very on point. I had a little bit of an issue when I was uh, practicing. That was the um, corner on the end of the Mistral straight. Uh, Bentley sometimes decided like to die, just like AMG style. So that was a little bit of a hiccup. But uh, Chris like completely erased this behavior and it was just perfectly balanced. All the track was, I mean, Maybe the last corner because both is a little bit longer car, uh, so the tight corner wasn't really extremely well good for the car. But other than that, it was just yeah, all the sectors were great, which is really great and awesome. Yeah, I mean the car looked extremely well balanced, and you know that's every driver's dream, isn't it, to have a balanced, a well balanced car uh, at every point of the track. And um, you certainly proved that point today. And uh, yeah, you pretty much sort of sailed away, really. I mean, like you said, unfortunate. Uh, situation with the sister car with, uh, with Jordan Daly and uh, Mike uh, Tigney and you know I did I did witness at one point you you guys were bump drafting down down the Mistral straight and uh, you know I did wonder if it was just a case of you know using that to sort of pull a gap to, to, to the third place car but um, no it was a great display today and you know just you guys proved you know how strong a team you really are. I'm really happy we can deliver. Martin, anybody you want to shout out, say thanks to out there? Oh yeah, thank, uh, well, thanks uh, for, for my teammates, uh, obviously, from, uh, because they did astonishing work today. Uh, obviously, my uh, the RCI team as a whole, because great guys and great management, and all the sponsors that are providing us this car. We are, happy, we are so happy that uh, the sponsors uh, bought us a Bentley, not a different car, like an older Bentley, even before this Bentley. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks for, for all uh, involved, uh, for all people involved in this and to the RCI staff that they are making these uh, wonderful jams, these more tours. It's just super mega fun to drive here, as always. Well, there you have it, folks. Your winner here today for the 12 hours of Paul Ricard in the Pro Class. RCI Esports in the 769 gets it done again. Martin Lawrence, Felipe Brecha, and Christoph Estrepa win it here today. Congrats, Martin. Thank you, and congratulations all who finished. There you have it. And waiting patiently in the wings is your silver winner, Cliff Bolke. And we thank you so much for waiting. But... Uh, Wow, what a race that ended up becoming for you. You can say that uh, all the way to end the 12 hour race, uh, I'm still shaking, so. Uh... What, what must have been going through your mind, Cliff? Because obviously you know that the Dutch sim racing car is quite quick. There's a Dutch Belgian rivalry as well, but somehow you kept the ACC Vlanderen car in front. How'd you do it? Well, actually, I, I, I don't know. Um, um, our strategy um, was uh, was to, to drive the race out and, uh, and be second uh, until we noticed um, uh, the Kleinen was behind us, uh, so we, we didn't know what happened. Um, we heard they, they had some kind of a disconnect. Um, and yeah, that's, that's bad for them. Uh, uh, but. Uh, but they had a good chance to take it back from us. But uh, yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> what a race. That, that is exactly what happened. I refer to it as a penalty. It was a self-inflicted penalty. They were oh, swapping okay. driver in the pit lane and they disconnected while doing it, which meant they had to reconnect and go through all of that. Oh, and uh, okay. it's a self-inflicted penalty, if you will. And that's what happened. They, they came out 10 or so seconds behind you. You managed the gap, and for four or five laps, though, Cliff, 
you keep them behind you. A couple of attacks down the Mistral as well. Um, you've got to be pretty pumped about your ability to do that and getting a win here. I could manage uh, to, to keep him behind me because I knew he had a, a new car, a new tires, new brakes uh, with the disconnect. Um, so uh, I, I saw he was doing a 50 horse. Uh, uh, I on, on the old times uh, was unable to do that. Um, um, I think still can believe uh, I, I kept him behind me. Uh, actually, I, I definitely will watch the, the stream again. Uh, yeah. It, it looked absolutely heroic. Les Stevenson, you have a word for Mr. I certainly do. Cliff, I mean, congratulations. What a win. You certainly uh, you certainly kept us on our toes at the end there. And I'm sure when you say you're still shaking, the adrenaline's obviously pumping still. And, you know, really well done on being able to keep the composure and keep in front. And, you know, I, I'm all right in thinking you guys start from the pit lane. That's correct. Um, I don't know what happened at the start. Um, it was me in the car uh, at the start of the race, so uh, I pressed the uh, drive at uh, four seconds uh, to go, I think. And uh, yeah, uh, when, the st when the cars um, started rolling, I, I was teleported back to the pit. So uh, yeah, there, there was a moment we thought, oh shit, um, are we gonna drive this thing or are we gonna quit? But uh, yeah, we've we, we, we driven we it and uh, lucky us. Lucky you indeed. And then you've just proven to a lot of people as to why yes. it pays to, uh, to, you know, even at the start, things can go wrong, but it's always worth an endurance event to always carry it out to the end. You just never know what can happen. And you prove that point by eventually going on to win the event. So congratulations. And, you know, is there anyone you want to shout out to, uh, to say thanks to, or, you know, just to say, Hello to. I, I, I definitely would like to thank my, my team, uh, Bram, uh, Manu, Simon, uh, Amadeo, the Kaiser, uh, all of them um, for working on the setup and everything. Uh, I only also would like to thank uh, Klein for the great battle we had uh, at the end of the race, it was uh, really epic. And uh, also big congratulations to Christophe, the Stephen and his team. Yeah, they they were uh, the only uh, they were in another league today. They certainly were. You're not wrong there. They certainly were in another league. They were. Uh, I think they finished two laps ahead of uh, yeah. of their closest rival. So, yeah, no, congratulations, and um, I'm glad the, that the, the racing was clean and respectable. And you know, it's great to hear you you sort of congratulating your competitors as well for a, for a clean race. So, uh, no, thank you very much for coming in and speaking with us, and congratulations on the silver class win. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. There you have it, folks. ACC Vlanderen wins it in silver on a shocking finish here today. We promised you a good day of racing. We promised you that it wasn't over till it's over. And let me tell you, when RCI makes you a promise, we deliver. And they definitely, I say we like we did anything. The drivers delivered. The teams delivered. What a grandstand finish that was. All for the silver win. And a championship Still on the horizon for many teams. Don't think that their hopes are undone by one bad race. They'll have an opportunity in about a month's time at Circuit of the Americas, that eight-hour event, to erase all the bad. Most of the teams probably already considering what they're going to do for the next round anyway. Quickly, one final bit of business I want to take care of. Shout out to uh, our newest follower over on Twitch, Das Tony. Didn't give them a shout out earlier. So thank you very much for following the channel. And uh, Les Stevenson, uh, I mean, I, I'm just sort of lost for words. What a treat we had today. What a treat indeed, Jesse. I think that's probably a good way of putting it. We really have been treated to what we can, I can only describe as a spectacle. You know, 12 hours, all these drivers and teams battling out all to, you know, to the very, very end. I know I'm going to repeat myself, but it just goes to prove if you go all the way to the end, anything can happen. And um you know, there's some great results all around for a lot of teams. There's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be extremely happy with today's race. Yeah, it didn't go all their way to start with, or or maybe even halfway through, or even at the end. You know, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of teams out there that are extremely happy with with what they ended up having as a result. So, no, it's been a great race, and um, 
you know, we've got we've got some interesting rounds coming up uh, for the rest of this campaign. Um, we've got uh, our next race, of course, being held at the Circuit of Americas, um, which, uh, you know, is an eight hour race. That's on the May the 11th. Uh, we got, you know, that's the next endurance event. Um, and that's all, of course, leading up to uh, what will be uh, one of the, the biggest races of the season with a 24 hour race of the Red Bull Ring. And that, of course, is happening on June the 8th. And uh, of course, the championship ends at round five, which is Imola, uh, where on July 13th, where we've got a six hour finisher, which um, most most teams will probably treat as a sprint race. So, you know, we've got it all here within the World Tour Championship. And um, yeah, it's just turning out to be a great, great spectacle. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the races uh, that are coming up. I wonder in that 24 hour race at the Red Bull Ring, how many thousands of laps they may run. They might run 1,500, 2,000 laps in a 24 hour period. That might be an overestimation. It's Jesse Maths. Don't take that to the bank. Our partners, of course, we couldn't do it without them. They've been scrolling at the bottom of your screen all day long. Thank you to AK Esports, Fanatech, Driver 61, DigitalMotorsport.com. And, of course, go setups. Uh, no doubt, some uh, interesting setups and hardware used in today's race. It was about as good as it was ever going to be. 12 hours of racing here in beautiful France. A little bit of rain, a little bit of mystery, and some excellent door-to-door -door racing. Not a whole lot in the way of penalties, and the stewards will rejoice with that. The drivers will as well. They settled it mostly out there on the racetrack. Some didn't make it. Some chased victory here today what more could you ask for i repeat myself next broadcast here on the rci family of networks guaranteed i racing imsa at spa next thursday it's been an absolute pleasure les thanks for being with me no and thank you everyone for uh you know dan van zumfen uh yourself ash bb you know making my first league comms uh such an enjoyment and, uh, and 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 very easy. So uh, yeah, I thank you all for what's been a great day. And you know, like like we all say, you know, <clears throat> if it wasn't for for your friends and your and your colleagues and uh, you know making life easy, then it's uh, it would make it a lot lot harder. So you know, I thank you, uh, Ash. Obviously, uh, in my ears and behind the cams, you know, making them making some great great pictures and and some great replays. So you know, you know, I want to thank everyone, and uh, it's been a great. I've had a real real good time and. I've enjoyed my first league comms and, you know, may more continue. You absolutely smashed it, mate. Quickly, before we sign off for the evening, we will not leave you in suspense. We do have the championship points as they finish today. And, of course, this is tentative pending any post-race penalties. I highly doubt that will be the case. In the pro category, RCI Esports Blue, they've won two on the trot, 144 points. That's maximum, nearly on pace, nipping at their heels. That seems like a decent amount of points to be back, but with so many cars, 20 or so, or 15 to 20 cars in the class, it's not really that big of a deal. So nearly on pace in P2. RCI Esports Yellow continuing to build on their great work in third with 106. Forza Italia.pl, the recovery drive of the day, in my opinion. They were at, they were outside the top 15, I'm pretty sure, at one point early in the race. Drove all the way back up there, made all those points back up in their Ferrari, and sit comfortably in fourth place. Stone Cold Racing in P5, 88 championship points to their name. RCA Esports Red has 81. SPH e Motorsport is on 70. Team Monkey Racing in eighth place, a few points behind that. Two points behind them, Rebound Racing Seniors. And the RPMS Sim Sport 707 rounds out your top 10. Outside the top 10, it's Swiss RC. The number 69 German entry, two points behind them. RCI Esports Pink in the 799. Uh, Triwall Sim Racing is 14th. Lunarasa Sim Racing in 15th. UA Amateurs has 15 points in 16th. And everyone else has retired from the championship. I was right, but only by a margin i said it was 15 to 20 cars it's 15 cars les take it away the silver standings yeah and as you can see in the you know at the top of the standings there we've got the dutch sim racing team who finished second today as you know and uh they're on 113 points then we've got the city start racing blue team uh with the 99 points they're not not too far away um but close catching on their heels as you say uh, the 723 of the lhr left-hand racing team 
in that McLaren uh, with 96 points. Swiss RC in fourth with 93. Reed Rambate Racing Juniors uh, with 92 in fifth place. Uh, sixth place, we've got the ACC Flandering, uh, of course, won today. Uh, they've got, they're on 86 points. Uh, you've got P7, which you've got Dropping the Hammer Racing with 81 points. There's a silent clap there. Uh, and we've got in eighth place, we've got Stone Cold Racing 317 in the BOW with 60 points. Uh, in ninth, we've got Wolfpack Racing, I Endurance in 59, also joined uh, with 59 points. We've got the DGSR Team 190 in the Ferrari. And then just outside the top 10, we've got the Wheelbarrow Racing Team, the Ferrari, uh, with 56 points. Only the Esports in 12th with 53. In 13th, we've got a Sim Racing Team in the Ferrari with 48 points. In 14th, we've got QRT Esports 33 in the Aston Mine with 31 points. Speed Juice Horse Flow uh, in the Nissan with zero and Austrian Motorsports also with zero. And then everyone else has signed out the championship. Couple more things to clear up uh, post race here. Crash Neck from the Wheelie Slow team has laid their plight on our table over on Twitch saying they got P14 in split two. It was a decent result considering they blew a tire and got a drive through penalty as a result of that. Uh, some uh, congratulations from the DSRT team. Congrats to everybody involved. Uh, Sin and Ra has joined us. It's very thrilling indeed. Thank you so much. And you know what? One final time. Thank you all, whether you're liking, subscribing, uh, following, whatever it may be, chatting with us in the chat as well. We appreciate you being here and spending your Saturday, at least some of it anyway, with us here. We hope that you enjoyed today's race. And with that all said, Les, nothing left to do but turn out the lights, I reckon. I th certainly think it is. And, uh, you know, we've seen the sunset of the French Riviera. We're going to bid a f farewell to the unforgettable chapter as what's been the RCI World Tour here at Paul Ricard. So thank you all for watching. And until next time, keep the engines roaring and the dreams soaring.